And he's giving the spiel like, listen, like like the battle speech, like not all of us are going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> right? So all the thing I hear is we're going to war with the DC car. So I get in the cell and he's like, all right, all of us ain't going to make it. He goes, and some things are worth spending the rest of your life or giving your life for. But one thing ain't going to happen, man. These people ain't going to just do us any kind of way. So y'all get ready Friday morning. We're going to meet them on the rec yard. We got a day and a half. Call your people. Let them know because this is going to go down. So I said, hey, uh, I have a question. Right? So, uh, uh, uh. Yeah, what's up, man? I said, um, why are we going to war? I said, what happened? I go, ain't nobody ever told me what happened. Why are we going to war? Iceman put his head down. Because one of them dudes. Hey, this is Matt Cox, and we're doing a, Zach and I are going to do a podcast about. Yes. I want to say funny prison stories or just really just I, prison, prison, prison stories. stories. I mean, the, the, that, this, that's definitely not the life, but it's a different life. Yeah. And we feel it, it's worth exposing. Yeah. Well, you there know, are things that happen that, you we know, thought were hilarious. You don't really like watch YouTube, but there's a lot of guys that have YouTube channels and all these guys that, you know, not all these guys, but I've get a lot of guys that are like, you got to tell prison stories. You got to. Okay. Listen. I don't have the prison stories that guys like Wes Watson have. Like, there's a guy named Wes Watson who's like, you know, and I told that motherfucker, I told him you're going to go out there and put in some work. So I suitcased that shank, and I, you know, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, and we were at war, and I went into the wreck yard, and I stabbed that. And it's like, what are you, bro? I don't, I'm a white collar criminal. I'm not stabbing anybody. What are you doing? You know, it's a, I don't have those stories. Like, these other guys have channels that are completely predicated on, these horrible, vicious stories. And a lot of those stories, by the way, don't even happen to those guys. No. Like, they'll tell you, so there was this guy one time in uh, in the pen, and his name was Bobby. Well, Bobby, and then they'll tell you a story about, it wasn't even him. It was Bobby's story, and he may not even been known Bobby. He just, oh, well, you happened. told him about Bobby. Right. Because nobody can go through the amount of violence and and, and riots and stabbings and all the things that these guys um, are covering in their content in in a span in anybody's span of of prison. And if you notice these guys, a lot of guys think that you and Bobby were buddies. No, I didn't even know Bobby. Right. Or I saw I knew Bobby one time, and he told me about a, a fight he got into at another prison. Yeah. And now I'm telling that story on YouTube as if it's your own. Right. And I don't want to do that. No. Like I don't want to tell somebody else's story. The you know a third party story. Because every time the stories always continue to get diluted. Yes. Some of them are urban legends and right. you know the the riot of two thousand eight and the, you know yeah. like all the things that went, were you there for this and you know it's it, it's all ginned up and and like both of us started off as at the medium right? right and so the people would come there and tell us oh man if this was a pen if this was a penitentiary these kind of things wouldn't go on you know yeah. And, and and all that's not the case, you but know. You, yeah, saying? but you know different because you went to a pen eventually. <laughs> that's exactly right. So we both entered. We both entered prison on bank fraud charges at the medium. At the medium, yes. Only, I was a good inmate, and I got to go down. Oh. Zach went up. <laughs> I mean, which which everyone <laughs> wasn't thought was my fault. A, I know everyone thought it was quite a feat. When I got to the pen, people go, um, "You started off at the medium, yes." Kind of went in the wrong direction, buddy. <laughs> so, you know? so, so what, when did you get? What, when did you actually get to uh, to Coleman? I think I, I arrived at Coleman in April of two thousand eight, and um, like that was my first. That was my first time in prison. I had been in county most of the time. All the time I did was in county jail, so that was my first bout with prison. And then to enter there with like sixteen years was in, insane. So once I got there, I just kind of told myself, well, what I'll do is like I'll click up with people who have similar crimes. Right. You know, because I hear a medium prison, it's it's not super violent. There's a little violence, but you can avoid it, which was kind of accurate. So right. it was my goal to, to meet up with people with because I'm like, this is the feds. 
So I'm not dealing with some crackhead on the corner that the cop picked up. Yeah, these aren't guys that are that are breaking into people's houses no. and and the, stealing purses. These are supposed well, it's supposed to be people who organized and put organ criminal organizations together or had their own business and were doing different things that might be on the level upon, upon, upon which I was accused of doing. Accused of doing. Right? So I'm I'm thinking this is gonna be a, a graduation. And unfortunately, it didn't. There's still, all a, there's work still that way. a lot of crackheads. <laughs> there's still a lot of guys. Yes, yes. It's yeah. still a lot of idiots. So um, when I'm I'm at Coleman two months, and of course, like your arrest was televised. I'm sure you've covered that. And when you got to Coleman, it became a big deal. Like every because everyone knew me as a as as the frauder when I right. got there. Oh, we, you know, and there's not a Zach, lot of fraud guys in mediums. Right, go ahead. There's not. Sorry. So they're like, "Hey, hey, Matt Cox is here." I'm like, "What?" They said, "Matt Cox." I knew of you because of articles that they ran in the Tampa paper. Right. When they were looking for you, right, and I'm like, "Oh, now this dude." I remember saying to myself. This dude knows what he's doing. <laughs> like, I actually idolized you. I'm like, this man knows what he's doing. Didn't you and tell then, me you yes, actually told your wife? I told my wife, I go, I would love to meet this dude, but the only place I'd meet this guy is federal prison. <laughs> and guess what? A couple of years later, bam! Wow. <laughs> Fate just brought it together. So my point is, I hear you're on the compound, and I'm like, where is he? And so a buddy of mine, I guess his name was Sheldon. We were trying to remember. I, it, was the, the guy I know, it was Sheldon. I'm telling you, I think it was definitely she, his name was Sheldon. He had the, the yeah, a he, mullet. He which, had a mullet. He was a when, complete weird gun. Like mullets are coming back now. No, they weren't. They weren't then. Like no, they were. They weren't they in were, 2008. They weren't coming back. No, no. In fact, they the were rumor way of out. them coming back was kind of put the rest. <laughs> so he told me he could arrange an introduction. I said, get out of here. I said, please, please introduce me to the infamous Matt Cox. Now, of course, you've been on the compound a couple of weeks, you know, and I don't know what's going on in your world. Like, what was going on the first couple of weeks you got there? Yeah, so I got there, and essentially, I'm a soft white guy, and I get to... (laughs) Marshmallow, I think, is what they called you. (laughs) Yeah, I get to, you know, the medium. Spongy, I think. (laughs) I get to the the medium, and, uh, like... Literally within the first or second day, I've got guys coming up to me going, hey, uh, can I talk to you for a second? What, what kind of guys? Black guys. <laughs> big black guys? Big black guys. Of course. Like of course. Your, your worst nightmare. <laughs> only, you know, only like a little white guy's worst nightmare is to like get a celly who's like six foot two black guy that that is like aggressive. But these guys weren't aggressive. You know, they were kind of romantic. They were just, they were trying. They were like, I can light some candles, put on some soft music. Why don't you come to my place around seven? You know, what's going on? The mob and gay. Yeah. <laughs> so highlight on gay. <laughs> so these guys, come, these guys, this guy comes up to me. He's like, can I talk to you for a second? I'm like, uh, yeah, what's up? And he goes, oh, 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 come, let me talk to you over here. And I walk over and I'm like, what's up? Well, let me talk to you over here alone. And I went, oh, bro, what's up? Like I now I know something's wrong. You want to try and get me into the corner? <laughs> Stand where the camera can see me. So I'm like, "What's up?" And he goes, "Uh, oh, you need anything? Like what?" And he's like, "Oh, you need anything? Like you need a, a tennis shoes? What size you? I'm gonna get you some tennis shoes. No, I'm gonna I'm good with tennis shoes. You ain't got no tennis shoes. You got tennis shoes? What's up?" <laughs> like. I threw Which a little. Is probably not a good no. question. Listen, I'm, I threw some bass in my voice. I'm like, yo, what's up, man? What's up? What's up? Which I think I'm, I'm standing up straight, pull the shoulder back. Like, he's still six two, you know. So they're like, uh, I, I, you, you need, I get you whatever, whatever you need, bro. I get you. I take care of you. I can. Whoa, 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 whoa. That's awfully friendly of you. Why? What? What? what you know? So to what do I deserve this? This friendship? I'm just saying, you know, I'm looking for me a friend, and I went. That seems like a friendly place. I'm sure you'll find a friend. Like now I'm realizing the way you're talking to me is uncomfortable. And and so, and he's like, I'm just saying, you know, you, uh, you, uh, and he started like in prison, you know, gay guys are punks. He's like, you, 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 I'm saying you, you a punk. I mean, you gay, right? And I went, no, no, absolutely not. Because look on the masculine scale, like 
I'm not a 10. You're you know, <laughs> I'm like a, a five on the masculine scale. Well, but but in prison, ten. I'm a two. <laughs> because the scale's skewed. It is skewed. And, and it's skewed by the way you talk. Because I had the same accusation. Right. Right. But it's just the intelligence equals, I guess, weakness or, or gayness. Uh, Right. In, in, in a prison setting. Right. I'm still saying please and thank you. I'm still, you know, what a mistake that was. Um, I'm still acting like a like a civilized person. And these guys are just it's a, ridiculous. It's a, it's a show. The, the, the change in culture is shocking. Right. You, you're like shocked. And it, and it takes years, but it does. It slowly changes you. So yes. so this guy, I'm like, yeah, 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 bro. I'm good. I don't need nothing. No, not gay. Pass it around. <laughs> We're good. No, I'm just saying, man. I, 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 and I just walked off. Look, the next day, I'm walking on the compound, some some big black guy. No offense, you know, I'm not saying I'm not making a I'm not making a, a an accusation. Another big black guy comes to me and says, Hey, uh, talk to you for a second. I'm like, uh, I'm walking to the rec yard. Well well, yeah, what's up? I walk in the kitchen, man. I'm just saying if you need anything, let me know. And I went, Okay, okay. I'm saying, you know, you need anything. Like, I get you anything. Like, bro, you need some shoes. I take care of them. I'm like, shoes in the kitchen? What? He's like, Somebody, I'm saying. Someone, they want you barefoot. Yeah. Go I, got, <laughs> I got you. I got, you know, he's like, I'm, 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 I get good money. I make good money. Like, I get money sent in. It's like, you need anything, man. You know what I'm saying? You need that. Like, no, bro, I don't need nothing. I'm good. I'm good. You just give me a list. Let me know. Like, what do you mean give you? I'm good. Thank you. No. Keep walking. Another guy. Man, let me talk to you. Uh, uh, let me talk to you myself for a minute. And I remember this one. You remember the guy Bear? I remember Bear. Two, there's Bear is hangs Bear out. Had, Bear had a bathrobe, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. So Bear also had a bunch of buddies that he hung out with, and there were a couple guys standing by his door, and another couple of his buddies standing over here. Ooh. And I'm and, and Bear says, "Can I talk to you?" And I walk out to the rail. This is on this top tier. I walk over the rail. And Bear goes, let me talk to you in, my, in myself for a second. And, I glan- and I'm, I'm like, well, why? What's up? Well, let me talk to you in myself for a second. And I look and I can see a couple of his buddies off to the side. And I can see a couple other buddies to his side. And I remember I grabbed onto the rail and I went, no, I'm good here, bro. Because I remember thinking, he could right now they could try and rush me and pull me in the cell. Like, what's that? in the cell, there ain't no fucking camera. No. Like there's no camera pointing into the cell. No. So, and I remember, I said, no, he, he, and he looked at me, he goes, he goes, man, let me just, I said, no, I'm, I'm good here. He's like, man, let me just talk to you and, and myself for a second. I looked at him, I said, no, bro. He goes, what, what, will you think I'm going to try something? I said, if I don't go in your cell, I don't have to find out. What is it you need, bro? And he went. Oh, a lot he, of base then. Oh, I'm ready to jump over the fuck. I'm ready to jump <laughs> over off, the top, off the top tier. <laughs> I'm so concerned at this point. And he, I'm just saying, man, you know. I got whatever you need, bro. I got marijuana. I got whatever you need, man. I can get you. Like, I, I got, you need some tennis shoes. I see you walking around in the boots all the time, man. Let me give you some tennis shoes. I said, no, nah, bro, we're done. We're done. I didn't, I, I said, no, nah, we're done. I said, I'm good, good. Just, bro, no offense, leave me alone. Not interested. Not going to your cell. Don't need anything from you. I'm good. I appreciate it. I didn't even walk away right away because I didn't want to let go of the rail. I waited till he kind of turned a little bit to look over at his buddies, and I turned around, grabbed with the other hand, and kind of walked along holding the rail because I'm that concerned. Scared, like. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very, very. Remember how the showers were right in the middle of the, the, you take a shower, guys could actually go up on the top rail and look down on you taking a shower. I never even knew that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, remember yeah. how the showers I were in I remember how the, they were, but I didn't know people could look. Oh, yeah. And I remember be. seeing you could look up at the top rail. Yeah, but, but they can go up there and look down on you. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it was, you know, the whole setup ain't good. But keep in mind, you really, there were places you could be alone. Like, you could, there was no cameras, but very few. Um, anyway, yeah, I'm definitely staying in, in, in front of the cameras. The first few days, first couple of weeks, I didn't even go in my cell unless. They were locking the door. They were locking the door. Cause I didn't know what was going to happen. Like it's a bad situation. Then I'm in the rec yard one day and you come up to me. Well, at, at that point, like I said, I, I heard you were on the compound. So I'm like, this is the opportunity. And then they pointed him out. Like there's Matt Cox Sheldon. I'm like, Whoa. So then I'm, I'm walking up smiling. I'm like, Hey, Matt Cox, come here. Let me holler at you for a second real quick. I go, Hey, I heard you and I got a lot in common. And you just kind of went, oh, Jesus. 
and walked off. <laughs> and st- well, stormed oh. off quickly. But anyway. yeah, then Sheldon. Y'all ever give up? No, anyway. <laughs> Sheldon comes up to me. I, I remember thinking, "This is it, is this what the next twenty six years is going to be like?" <laughs> I mean, these guys can't take a hint. Like all of them, uh, and then even she, the soft one like you. But anyway, go ahead. <laughs> and then uh, I remember the next day. Yeah, Sheldon came. It was like the next day or day after. Sheldon came up and said, "Look, I got a buddy of mine wants to talk to you." And uh, I want to make an introduction. I was, I go, why? Because now I'm, I'm suspect of everybody. I know, black guys, white guys, Hispanic. Like, I'm not here to make friends. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't trust anybody. And so Sheldon's like, I got a buddy that wants to talk to you. And, you know, he, I, I would like to make an introduction. And I went, why? He's like, well, I mean, he, he tried to talk to you the other day. And he said he walked up and started to say hey to you. And you just walked off. Like, he thinks maybe, like, maybe you're prejudiced or something or something. I don't know. <laughs> and I looked at him and I went, it, was this a, a black guy? He's like, yeah, yeah. And I go, what does he want to talk to me for? And he goes, um, he goes, well, he's here for fraud. I went, fraud? And he goes, yeah. And I go, where is he? <laughs> Why didn't he start with fraud? Like, and then I tracked you down. We started talking and hanging out. I know. And did never... We never got along after that. But anyway. <laughs> I remember that's the thing about the, the Sheldon crack was that Sheldon was a hundred and probably 145, five foot eight or nine, yes. 145 pounds. Mullet. Had a mullet. White with guy. Spiked, with the spiked top. Ridiculous. With the spiked Ridiculous. top. Ridiculous. Had, I mean, just looked just straight white trash and, and, and just a, a complete like nerd, a white trash nerd. Gun, gun advocate. Yeah, gun nerd. Nut. He's moving to Alaska so he can have a gun to hunt. Like I'm always gonna have a gun. Yeah, no matter what. Yeah. And and I remember one time. I mean, just a complete geek. Um, and I remember one time I was there and uh, Reese was there. This guy, a guy we know. And so Reese was there, and I remember. And Sheldon goes, they t- talking about something. I, somehow or another, uh, Sheldon ended up saying, "You see these? These are lethal weapons." Yes. And 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 Reese goes, those are dick beaters. Don't, you, <laughs> you, don't, don't which, know, which are also lethal. Yeah. But you, <laughs> don't, just don't don't overestimate yourself, right. Sheldon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but Sheldon. Maybe he had fast hands. Yeah. but <laughs> Sheldon and real quick, like I told you earlier, you didn't know this, but Sheldon actually, when he got out, he had another buddy that was incarcerated. That buddy was like, hey. Go to my here's the address where my, where my wife lives. So when you get out of the halfway house, like you can go to her. Um, she'll help you set, help set, find you a place to stay, help get your car, the whole thing. Right. Sheldon goes there, talks to the guy's wife. He she lets him stay on the couch for a few weeks, and then so the guy's calling home and like Sheldon's there, like hey yeah I'm here I'm getting a job I'm this she's helping me out I appreciate it, appreciate it. After a few weeks, the wife stops answering the phone. Right. Guy keeps calling calling calling. After like another few weeks, finally the wife opens, or I'm sorry, finally the wife answers the phone and says, don't call anymore. I'm with Sheldon now and hangs up the phone on him. Can you imagine? I mean, listen, out of anybody that I wouldn't want my wife to leave me for, it's Sheldon. It, it that's that it's it's first leaving me at you're leaving me at all well, well, of course it's bad lie. enough if, if, if it was have you have to lie well it was, of course it was a great looking guy of course I mean, he was he was a doctor <laughs> well you know what i'm incarcerated he's a doctor i get yeah, it I mean, I, but it, sheldon yeah they're like no actually this is the guy you're embarrassing like, yeah it's embarrassing it's, don't tell anybody that yeah please no no not at all so, so unfortunately for me <laughs> right i got into the middle of some controversy at the at the Coleman Medium, right, right. But you you stayed on the right path and went to the low. Yes, yeah, good and times. Unfortunately for me, I'm I take another road, which ha- involves taxes or something. Yeah. Well, they say of- yeah they 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 a bunch of guys got grabbed. Yes. And some of them said that you were helping or organizing guys to file for. The, the drop for false income taxes, which is, which is a combination of identity theft and, of course, fraud against right, the United right. States government, which you didn't do. Right. But these guys said that you were involved in it. Here's the reason, not only because I believe Zach, but also the time frame that I know this happened. Literally, Zach had gone to court fighting a, a, his, a, his sentence, went to court, was gone for like, I always say you were gone for like eight months or 10 or a year or something. How long? 10 months. So gone for 10 months. I actually moved to the medium. 
He showed up. Went to the low. I'm sorry. I went to the low from the medium. You showed up like a month later, yeah, right? Like two weeks later. Oh, two weeks later. Yeah. So we missed each other. Yeah, because you wrote my sister. Right, right. And I remember too. She wasn't. She wouldn't pass letters anymore. That was like she was like that. That was like one letter. You. She was like, uh, look. You wrote me a letter back. You were like, look. I had to beg my sister to pass the exactly. letter along. She's right. not gonna. She's not gonna do this. Right. Um, Consistently. Right. So. Um, it was only a few weeks later when you got grabbed. Like, there's no way for you to have organized what they said you were doing within a few weeks. Like, I got got back to the medium, and boom, a month later, I'm collecting taxes. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Like, it's not. It's not possible. Right. But they they clearly put that on me. Right. Anyway, it was it was all botched. Right. The whole thing was. But it went on your jacket. It went on my jacket. Well, because they couldn't get criminal charges. Right. Like, cause I talk about it with, uh, with a couple people I still stay in touch with. They decided to just dirty up my jacket and send me to the pen. Right. Matter of fact, when they sent me to the pen on the, the day that we were packing out, I'm asking, where am I going? And they told me you're going somewhere where you won't ever think about filing taxes again. Nice. That's exactly what they told me. I'm nice. like, hmm. good times. Hopefully it's home. I don't yeah. want to, you know, <laughs> <laughs> So you went to the pimp, you went to what? US, USP Beaumont. Right, which if in your, guys in the prison system actually call it Bloody Beaumont. Bloody Beaumont. Yeah. And um, yes. So fear level up up to here. I'm terrified, needless to say, I'm terrified. Like the, like I'm hoping it takes me six months to get there so I can like get my mind adapted. Right. Right. I spent a week in Tallahassee. Right. And the morning I left Tallahassee that morning, hoping that I'd be in Oklahoma, maybe a couple of weeks. Right. And I arrived at Beaumont that night. Fastest transfer ever. <laughs> Matter of fact, I probably would have arrived at Beaumont the same day I left. That's how fast they like, yeah, get in there. You know, so once once I get there, I'm I'm terrified. So I, I'd say I got to put bass in my voice. I got to sound tough. I'd already figured out my plan of sounding tough so I can make it in the pen. Now. Some of the people I would wit for, for us soft people who are at the medium, they were telling me, just get there and check in. Just get there and check in. <laughs> Meaning just go into the hole, protective custody as soon right. as you get there. Yeah, for, and, for what? The next 10 years? Yeah, that's what I'm saying to myself. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm, I'm not a coward. You know what I'm right. saying? I, I didn't really cooperate. My paperwork straight. I didn't really cooperate. So, I mean, I don't understand why I would have to check in. Why couldn't I just walk? Right. But, but logically told me that I'm kind of smart. So I'll act like I know the law. I'll make myself invaluable to the people. Right. And that way they'll make it, hey, 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 hey don't hit him. He's the law man. You yeah, yeah. I'm saying? He can help me get out. Don't, don't mess with this one. That's, so, that's what Pete did. My buddy Pete, he said you, you very, have to, very quickly have to figure out what, if you're not in a gang and you don't want to be in a gang and you don't want to do this, you, know, you have to figure out what makes me valuable so nobody bothers me. Exactly. So that was my plan. So I acted like I knew the law, which horrible mistake because then I have to listen to a bunch of people. That there's some up up ticks. I can walk the compound. Then I have to listen to a bunch of idiots. Right. You know, but it, it it worked out. So that was that was my claim to fame of surviving at the pen. But you really don't know. Well, you do know some. You did a lot of your own legal work in yes. the medium. Yes. So you know some of the basics. I listen. I learned that day one from Barrington. Barrington did my twenty two fifty five for like three hundred dollars. Barrington. Right. Yes. And I learned from him. So. It, it's 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 kind of like on the fly. So what I picked up and learned, because honestly, the first day I went for law, I like looked in the computer and I'm like, uh, I'm, <laughs> can somebody tell me how this applies to my case? <laughs> yeah, it's bad. Literally, that that's how, that's how little I knew about it. And to two years later, telling everyone I'm a legal genius and pulling it off. So obviously at the pen, I got into a couple of confrontations. Right. And that's kind of like what we were. So it wasn't, it was, yeah, it wasn't smooth sailing. No, it wasn't smooth. It's, it's not as bad as the stories that they make it out to be. Right. You know, but it's bad because I would say I witnessed, I myself witnessed about three murders where I heard the person died, where I've seen the person attacked and laying there. Right. And then I heard they died. And the whole time I was, I was there for six years and the whole time I was there, I think 18 people died. So I've seen three, but look, look I was there during two hurricanes where there was no water. Where like, that was the worst six years of my life. That was the worst six years of my life. Now, including your marriage, including what your marriage. 
Well, that was pretty, well, that ended up. Like, I always say that my, my that marriage. Was awesome. In my, the beginning, it was awesome. My marriage prepared me for prison. <laughs> so it's like, you know. Was, what, what was it like for you when you left? What? At the, at the low? Yes. I mean, it was it going from the medium to the low was like going from, you know, sleeping on a park bench to going to like a, a, a five star to going to like the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> what are you talking about? I was like. It was, was it no, cleaner no. or something? Or? No, no. Actually, it was. It, it actually, there were. You know, ha, you know what was worse? It was worse because it was a um, open bay. It was an open bay pod that sucked. Like at least you had a. At least in the in the medium, you had a room. You know, right. you close the door. It was quiet. It's. It is never quiet. Like you know, when you talk to people, they're always like, "Prison must be so lonely." I wish. I wish it was lonely. <laughs> it's always loud. There's always screaming. You're never alone. There's no privacy. I mean, like you're using you basically it's like your the bathrooms, it's it's 180 guys per unit trying to use five toilets and maybe eight showers and there's always lines and so even if you you're going to the bathroom like you know, you're you're taking a shit. There's a guy on a divider. It's not like if it's even a, its own thing. There's a there's div- it's like going to the movie theater. That's where you're going to the bathroom. You, you know, there's always a guy next to you. There's always, um, yes. you know, it's just disgusting. And and it, and it is. It's it's disgusting and it's filthy and everybody's screaming and hollering, and you know the the cells are horrible and the whole situation's bad. But there were a lot more smart guys there. Does that make sense? Yes, that that's important because. Who you, uh, you're probably the best person I affiliated with in right, there. In the medium. Yes, because like I could relate and have a conversation. Yeah. Everybody else was, I mean, but you you helped me when we were teaching GED. I mean, you remember oh, when yeah, the yeah. guy that's like, hey, I don't, I don't know how to add and subtract. And remember we asked him like, you don't know how to add and subtract. I remember. How, how do you make, I mean, what about change when you're getting change? Oh, I let my bitch count it. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, think we were like, I was like, well, what, we, you go, what if, well, what if she counts it wrong? I put that pipe on her. She count that shit right. <laughs> no, I'm saying. We and Matt looked like, well, that pipe will straighten yeah, them yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that will straighten a bitch. Do you remember, remember the, the guy <laughs> when I first when I first got there and I was doing the GED and I was trying to teach the guy how to do like like. Just basic, just fractions, like basic math. And we were like, it's like an hour in and he just could not get it. Like he'd been in a car accident. He had a scar. He was a Spanish guy. Right. Um, and so he just couldn't get it. And I went and he's like, ooh, ooh. I was like, you're just not grasping this. And he's like, I know, man, I, I got, you know, I, I was hit in, in, in the car accident. And he's going through this whole thing. I said, yeah, honestly, bro, you, he's, what should I, what do you think I should do? And I went, I mean, I think you should just go sit back to the unit. I said, because I mean, some people just, they're just not going to be able to get certain things. And, and so I was kind of explaining and it's not, it's not, you know, it's not a judgment or anything. It's just some people just don't grasp everything. And, and, you know, it's, you're not going to get your GED, obviously, and that's not going to happen. And, you know, we, we, they were in the skills class anyway, or they weren't yeah, going to get it. Yes. So I remember he was like, I should, so you think I should go back? And I was like, yeah. I, said, I was like, Zach, I was like, this guy's just going to have to go back. And I tried to explain to you and you went, no, no, he has to stay here. Like you don't get to excuse them. What are you doing? <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, he's not going to get it. He's like, it doesn't matter. That he's not going to get it. He doesn't get to go back to the unit. He has to stay here. Keep trying. I'm like, no, he's never going to get it. Zach. He's like, I, none of them are going to get it. Yeah. <laughs> These are well, not- some of them, some of them are dead, but yeah. they just but they didn't, were- they, some of them just didn't care. No, and and didn't. I like the, I like the guys that were honest and were just saying, Listen, bro, I don't need this because I'm gonna get out in about a year, and I'm just gonna sell drugs. Like it was like at least he's honest. Like at least he's yes. he's like I don't want to learn this because I'm just gonna go back to selling drugs. This is my life. I get out, I sell drugs, I come back, I get out. This is it. Yeah, that's it. Like at least he's honest. And the yo-yo effect works. I guess out in, out in. So, but yes. Yeah, so you learned the type of the caliber. So the caliber at the medium, from what we knew from. The teaching the GED. Sorry, I keep thinking about getting that. What? I was just thinking about some of the things that these guys did. Oh, sorry, yes. <laughs> sorry that they would say, and you and I would always look over at Zach, and he'd be like, "Oh like, yeah, we." You had uh, to write uh, three letter words, and the guy had written like it was like dog, cat. He wrote, uh, um, "What do you say?" Fit. Yeah. And we were like, "Fit like 
like yeah, no, but, like to to work out fit like no. you he's like, he's like nah fit I and fit we went, do it yeah he goes <laughs> we're like you use it he goes use it in a sentence he goes I fit to go back to the unit I fit to do it and I <laughs> I looked at Zach and Zach goes well, hey, it works. <laughs> Listen, we had a blast. That that's the, the stupidity. Like a lot of times we just sit there, we look at each other like push past it. Just push past it. <laughs> push past the stupidity. It's big. Just step around it. If you can't step over, let's go around it. <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy. But imagine meeting that same click of people, but more in the pen. Right. And there's the, nobody the, to talk to. No. Very, very, very few. But I'm, I'm going to tell you what's the, the difference is with the ignorance of the pen, the, those guys for some reason have better people skills. Honestly, just to be straight up honest, their, their ability to read people is like above normal. Their right. ignorance of like maths, of basic things and reading, super low, but their, their survival instincts of being able to tell what people are up to or just to be able to read them. Right. Excellent. And so their instincts are excellent. Their their intellect is horrible. So just being around them was very challenging. But it was and and so those type of situations made things violent. Right. It's like they would kind of predict like, you know, I I I can tell that you got an attitude about this and we're going to have a problem. Right. Like the they, moment they, they tell you I always say the moment they get somebody like somebody nobody the moment some guy who's like with a low IQ, the moment they get frustrated, their go-to move is violence. Yes. Like they can't reason it out. They can't determine, like they can't figure out what the recourses of, of going down this path. It's immediately violence will solve this problem for me. Immediately. I'll, I'll eliminate the right. issue immediately with violence. Yeah. And, and so I dealt with a lot of, I didn't teach GED there. Um, I, like I said, I just did law work, but I dealt with a lot of those situations. Now, in, in the pen, what, what happens is where you're from is automatically clicks you up with certain people. Yeah, in so car. When you, yeah, so yeah, they call them cars. So you have to ride with certain people based on your either your color of your skin, if you're in a gang, right. or from what part of the United States you're from. Right. So if you're not in a gang, you don't say, hey, I'm a Crip, and you go with the Crips. If you're, if you're, not, if you're not in that you can still go there. You don't have to join the gang, but you need to click up with your car. You with, need to be with, with right. different. Things. All right. So obviously, when when I got now, I lived. This was a mistake of mine because I I went to college in Texas. Right. So I could have claimed Texas. Right. Which would have been a not a large step or a full step up from Florida, but it would have been a step up. So <laughs> I told him I was from Florida. Now Florida, unfortunately, has a lot of what they call jackers. Which are gentlemen that masturbate out. These are, are, what do they call those guys that expose themselves in public? Like flashers. Flashers. So a jacker in prison is basically a flasher in action. And there, there's, <laughs> and there, there's two kinds of jackers. There's, there's gunners, which get up close to you, and snipers, which do it from a distance. Yes. <laughs> so and in so Florida, so unfortunately for me, Florida <laughs> had Cole, a, a like... lot of gun and snipers. Some, some of them were versatile that could go back and forth. So, you know what Colby's thinking right now? I could have been working for Graham Stephan. No. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. So Sorry. horrible, horrible car for me to get in. Right. So I'm in this car and like this becomes an issue. So when you're in a car, what happens is they call a meeting. Hey, we got a meeting on the rec yard. And, and a lot of times the staff let it go on so where everybody from your car, so I'm from Florida, we all stand around and one person will stand there and go, all right, man, this is what's going on. Blah, blah, blah. One guy will dictate what's going on. So one of the first meetings I went to, all right, man, this is what's going on. We had a problem with Billy, Billy in the chow hall jacket. So we're going to have to remove him from the compound. So all the new people that just got here ain't put in work, we're going to need y'all to put in work. So I'm getting pulled up like, okay, put in work. What do you need me to move some furniture or what? Yeah, I mean, I do the application. What do you need me to do? Go, no, you're going to beat up and possibly stab Billy for gunning in the kitchen. Oh, no. Uh, but no. I'm like, I don't even know Billy. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't seen him gunning, so I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so they send me and four, four other people to take care of Billy. 
Never done this before in my life. Never done this. So, so if you walked in and I knew you, I'd be like, I'm, I'm going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's just Zach. Well, believe it or not. Okay, so believe it or not. Did you walk in with the glasses? Did you take the glasses I off? I had the glasses on. I had, I had the prison glasses on. I oh, man. The, 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 the Chomo yeah, 2000s. The, the Chomo 2000s. <laughs> Big thick Dang. ass like this. <laughs> so apparently... This this came out funny because we were we were gonna beat him up. So like I get with somebody and they're like, look, we'll get him down and you just kick him in the face. <laughs> Can I hold him down? <laughs> Jeez. So this this was the plan. But the guy that led us, uh, obviously, the Billy was kind of a tough guy, and Billy wasn't afraid of the guy that that led the the path. So we all got together. And we're gonna go tell him to check in. They were gonna tell him to go. And tell the officer his life's in danger to go check in, right? And that's what he's going to have to do. And wait, and Billy is in your car. He's a he's from Florida. Yes, he's from Florida. So you're basically kicking out one of your own. Kicking out one, of, and that's that was the purpose of a car is to keep people in line, keep, keep your people in line. And if there was a problem between my car and another car, then both of us would talk, and they would arrange whether the two people would fight in the different cars one on one. Or whether we go to war. It all depends on what the situation was. Right. So I'm just giving you, because there was a situation where it was supposed to be a war. Right. You know, and, and believe it or not, in this, because did, did I Did Billy kinda, check in? What happened? I Sorry. Have a joke. There's a joke. It's, it's hard. Okay. I got to tell the story. Okay. All right. So what happened is one time I kind of prevented a war, which was crazy. But as I was there a while, I kind of moved up in ranks. Because I guess either I was level-headed or I spoke intelligently right. or whatever it was or I would say what other people were thinking they weren't. But people get used to you and they give you that, that type of title or role. All right, so for the Billy situation, we approached him and there was a gentleman that approached him that obviously Billy wasn't scared of. So the gentleman's telling Billy, hey, hey listen, man, we, we know you've been jacking in the kitchen. You need to go up top. So Billy's standing there. This is, we, we approached him. I'm sorry. He just come out of the chow hall. We got him in an area where there's no camera, right? And he has his apple and he's standing there and the guy is telling him, hey, his last name was Kitchens. Hey, you need to go up top, right? We, we know what you've been jacking. You need to go up top. So he's standing there and he looks at this guy. Then he looks at all four of us there. Then he bites his apple. <laughs> and he's chewing it like very animated, right? Ain't nobody. Who said they saw me jacking? I want to know who it is. So the guy's like, listen, man, it don't matter who saw you jacking. You got to go up top. He like, I ain't going up top. I have a fair hearing to find out who said <laughs> they saw me jacking. Ain't nobody saw me when I was jacking. When I was jacking. <laughs> I want to know who it is, right? So he's standing there eating apples. So I'm telling myself, I'm like, okay, the problem is, because the guy goes, man, this is really serious. And I'm like, the problem is he's not really thinking it's serious. I go, I don't, I think he thinks he can whip all four of us. <laughs> Cause he's looking at all of us in the face like, are you kidding? He's probably thinking, are you kidding me? They sent the B team. <laughs> I'm gonna get out of this. But fortunately for all of us, there was one A team member standing next to Billy, and he drew back and hit Billy. Cold cock in the side, knocked him completely out. <laughs> Boom! He hits the floor, apples rolling. He's laying face down in the corridor. The other two guys, not the guy that was talking, the other two go up, kick him in the face about eight times. I'm standing there, so they look back at me. I walk over, they go, no, 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 let's go, let's go, let's go. I didn't even have to touch him, and I ran. <laughs> that was my first call of duty. I actually... Did nothing. Did nothing and got labeled as putting in work. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> because I was in a car. Right. Within my first three months there, it was it was insane. It was insane. Did you want to give a, a low story? Did you have any? <laughs> a low story? Did you have any problem while you were over at the low? Um, what did I have? I mean, I only had the one where I was in the, I, I you know, I, I, I had the one story where I'm trying to think of physical contact stories. Okay, so, well, there was one story. There's this guy named, I think I've told this on Concrete, but there was a guy named um, uh, Ellis Cook. Ellis Cook had been to state prison 
two or three times. He'd actually gone to state. He'd actually gone to trial multiple times and and won because state you got a chance of winning. Right. Like he'd right. actually won. He actually, when he was like 18, 19 years old, robbed another drug dealer while the guy was home. Like basically, it was a home invasion. I mean, you can get twenty years, you know. So he's looking at twenty something years. He actually broke in the guy's house and beat the guy's ass. And the guy knew it was him because he'd ripped him off, ripped him off the money back. Call, the guy called the cops. They came and got him. He, was, he basically said he broke in and stole money. Right. Um, and he said, but I know who it is. And they, they went, they got him. He went to trial. He won. Yeah. So, but he'd been to trial several times, been to state prison several tri- times. And so Cook got to the medium. I'm sorry. Sorry. Cook got to the low. Right. And I'd been there for years. And we used to watch Walking Dead all the time in the the, the white TV room, right? Because you have the you have the black TV room, Hispanic and the white, but the whites and Hispanics were the the minority. So then you had the black the big TV room was were, was the black TV room. So <laughs> role reversal. Um, big blacks is why. So, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so what ended up happening was Cook came in and Cook immediately started, you know, dictating everything, like because he was like. As opposed to the the bulk of us, he's like a real criminal, and he had gotten there and immediately showed his paper, like walked in, boom, here's my uh my like his deck sheet that shows like like all your charges and what your sentence is, boom, minimum mandatory. I got uh you know uh, armed career criminal. I got uh I got 180 months, so I got 15 years armed career criminal. Okay, good. Like every guys are like, they're not even asking to see his PSI. And he, but he was offering, he's like, look, Brooke, I'm getting my sister to send my PSI right now. Right, right. He said, but this is my thing. So people saw that sheet and immediately were like, stand, he's a stand up guy. He's a stand up guy. So, right. right. So he's walking around telling people, calling everybody snitches and chomos and then those chomos. He can't, he can't be coming in the TV room and he, this, and you have to think there's five, half of out of a hundred and, I'm sorry, out of 1,800 inmates, really 2,000. So really it's close to 2,000 inmates in the low. Half of them have sex charges. Now, they may not be there for a sex charge, but so like let's say 30% are there for an actual sex charge, like, like they actually got caught like looking at child porn. Right. The other ones, they are sex offenders on other charges. Right. Or there's a rape in their past or there's a sex offense in their past, whatever. They're there on another charge. Remind me. I have a question to ask you about that. I just remembered, but go ahead. I'm gonna let you finish. Okay. So what happens is I want to watch the walking dead. We've been watching the walking dead for three or four years. So what ends up happening is, is, um, cook comes in. He's been there a few, like six months. <laughs> like he came in middle of the walking dead. Cocky, we, cocky yeah. guy. So he, right. He just, but, but everybody's letting him do it. Now, granted, listen, he's a big guy. He, he's aggressive. He's a, a you know, He's a uh, probably 5'10", 5'11", probably 195 pounds, 200 pounds, but in great shape. Like he's he's a he's a wood, you know. He's a, he's a guy. He works out every day. He's he's in great shape. So he comes in, and and so Walking Dead had just ended, and like the crew of guys that watched Walking Dead, within that six months started getting shipped, and moving or getting out. And then it got down to where the, the top guys in the room that watched Walking Dead, I was basically like the, me and one other guy were the top guys. And everybody else that watched it were newcomers or basically sex offenders who weren't even allowed in the TV room except to watch Walking Dead. They would come in there. Cook didn't like that. So when they're writing, the, the, they're writing up the schedule and everybody's like, hey, I want to watch this on this day. And they're writing the schedule. I said, hey, Walking Dead starts on Sunday nights. And he goes, yeah, bro, we ain't watching that anymore. We're watching... Um, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, a uh, uh, Skull Ranch, Broken Skull Ranch. And I went, no, 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 bro. We, we're watching Walking Dead. And he goes, nah, man, we ain't watching that. And so there's a guy doing the schedule, but Cook's like sitting down. Cook's like, we ain't watching that. And I go, no, we 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 are watching that. And and I could tell it. Like, Cook, Cook's a fucking prick, bro. Not true. Yeah. What? Well, where, I mean, where did, where, where did the aggression come from? With who? With you. I mean, oh, oh no. Well, you like, know, obviously. I mean, look, I'm playing it, it, in prison. I'm playing. A, I'm. You know what? It's a, you're it's playing a part, right? The entitlement. You've been there for a while. I've you're been thinking, there. Yeah, you're thinking everybody's. But listen, I'm. I'm. I, I got this. Yeah. I'll shut up. Oh yeah. Look, <laughs> I got my little piece of real estate. This is my chair. Yeah, that's right. My spot. Right. Yeah. So like, I let somebody hold my spot. But when I want to watch, I only barely have watched TV. But when I want to watch this movie, 
Like basically you've got it 90% of the time, but you're holding my spot. And when I want to watch a movie, you're just hit. You can just stand up, like. But guys so are you had you had street credit, right? right well, because okay, I've been you. there so long. I, I got you. I'm just so, asking. I'm just asking. Get so, uh, oh no, it gets worse. Like, what? Cook and I go back and forth. Like, Cook's like, no, no, we're going back and forth, back and forth. And he's like, no, uh, bro, that ain't happening. That happened. And, and I said, it is happening. I go, do you know why it's happening, Cook? And he goes, why? I said, I go, because I've been here five years and you just got here. That's why it's happening. Loud and he, like and, that. Oh, oh yeah. And he's he's all like he like snickers and laughs. He goes, motherfucker, you ain't doing shit. I said, okay, we'll see. I said, listen. Come Sunday, I said, I'm turning that fucking TV. I said, that's all you need to worry about. So I said, you can put your little thing on the, on the, um, on the list or not. I said, but the fact is, I'm going to turn the TV. I got up and walked off. Now, by the way, I'm not turning the TV. Cook would beat the brakes off me. He'd beat me like a small child. It would have been embarrassing. But, but, but the act was gone. Of course. Like you, like you got around the corner like. <sighs> I mean, how many times have you acted like a badass knowing I'm not following through? All right, I'm yes. trying to push this guy to get this guy. You know, look. I act like a tough guy in front of my girlfriend, even though both of us know that if push comes to shove, she looks at me and she's like, I will beat your soft ass. Like, a, like she, she'll tell me all the time. She'll look at me and go, like, don't, don't get hurt. Don't get hurt. But I act like, you know, oh, I wish you would. I wish you would. She's Bring like, it. She starts laughing. She's like, stop. Stop it. <laughs> I will beat your soft ass. So what, what happens with Cook is, so over the next couple of days, I'm literally getting all these other guys. I'm like, listen, the guys are coming up being like, bro, I heard you had an issue. I mean, we're still walking the watch. And are we watching the walking dead? We're watching it. Just do me a favor. We're all going to show up 30 minutes early, crowd the TV room. And they're like, and you're going to turn the channel. You're really going to turn the channel. I'm going to turn the channel, bro. I swear. I'll turn it. They're like, you sure? I'm like, man, I'm going to turn that. Channel. Don't even worry about it. I'm turning it. So we show up and then, so cook even comes to me later in the day. I'm sitting there all day posted up. So I'm sitting there all day and Cook goes, he's lean, he's making cracks every once in a while, leans back and he goes, Hey bro, I heard you got your little team coming in strong 30 minutes before the before Walking Dead. He goes, I see you got your boots on. I'm like, don't worry about what I got on. Yeah. And he goes, <laughs> Yeah, all right. All right. He's like, you know, you're gonna have a rude awakening when I he goes, when you try and get up and turn that that channel. He goes, you will see what happens, bro. You think I'm playing? I said, I'm not worried about you playing. I said, Cook, I don't give a shit. I said, there's one thing that's gonna happen. I said, I said, I'm going to get up and I'm going to turn the TV. I said, and we're, I said, even if we both go to the shoe, I said, we can watch it together because I'm going to yank that TV clean off the fucking wall. And we'll watch it together in the shoe together. And so he's all, oh, you know, and he's like, he's snickering and laughing. He didn't take me serious. Everybody's and guys are coming to me going, are you playing with him? Are you serious, bro? I'm like, I'm serious. Like I'm playing it up. I'm not doing nothing. So just but before. It's awesome. <laughs> oh, it's good. I was impressed myself. You're kind of like, damn. Yeah. I was like, I think I might even punch this I mean, guy. Even I'm your not mind's going, going like, hey, hey, did, did we really say that? Yes, yeah. we did. Yeah. Shut up. All right. <laughs> so as I'm leaving, so here's what happens. Uh, one, just before, like it's maybe an hour beforehand, I get up to leave and he says something like, oh, I see you got your boots on. Makes another crack. He's, he's got, make sure your boy's got your boots on. Whatever he's saying. He were talking shit. I get up to leave and he gets up to leave. And as I'm walking out the door, he makes some other crack. And I said, man, you, you need to stop worrying about whether I'm turning, because I am turning the channel. You watch. He said, you ain't turning shit. I said, bro, I'm, gonna rock, I'm telling you, I'm going to take that fucking TV off the wall. You think you're cute? I said, I don't give a shit. I said, bro, I got like 10 more years to go. I give a fuck. I said, I'll pull that thing right off the fucking wall. And he, and he looked at me and he goes, uh, what did he say? He said, oh, that ain't going to happen. I looked at him and I said, you need to stop worrying about what's going to happen, bro, because I'm going to yank that TV clean off the wall and we're going to watch. I said, we're going to watch it. We'll watch it in the shoe together. I said, what you need to worry about is this, that when we get out of the shoe and they transfer you, you'd better hope they don't send you someplace out west where they're going to be asking for paperwork that you and I both know you can't provide. And he looked at me and went, because what I basically say, if you don't, what I basically said, if nobody understands, is that I just said that I know your paperwork isn't good. I know you told on some people. Right. Like, I know you can't go out west where they're going to ask you for paperwork. For real. For real. Ask, like, not, not give you a pass because you came in and had the, a story that semi made sense. They're going to ask you for paperwork, and you're going to have to prove that you didn't cooperate. So I, so I said, hey, I said, they're going to send you someplace out west where they're going to ask you for paperwork that you and I both know you can't provide. And by the way, when I look at you like this, I wasn't looking at him like this. I was looking up at him because he's like, like I said, he's like, he's like 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 and I'm like 5'6". So we're this close. And I'm like, yeah, you better, you better. Uh, you know, it's like not intimidating. But I, and he, so he looked at me and he went, kind of looks around and he goes, 
did somebody say something? I mean, that was it, bro. You just fucked you up. You heard the brand. Yeah. Snap. It was like, and I went, I said, I go, yeah. And he goes, who? And I go, you, just now. And he went, he sat there and he goes, he, and he goes, oh, what? Brilliant move. What the? I said, bro, I said, your numbers don't work. They don't, your numbers don't work. I go, you, you're on a, you're off the chart for criminal history and you got 15 years. And he went, sat there and he goes, bro, you know, I'm just fucking with you, bro. You can watch that show. He said, I was just playing with you. I said, man, I was just playing with you too, cook. I would, you know, I was, you know, I don't care, but I was, I, I appreciate that. He's like, yeah, man, don't worry about it, man. I'll watch the show. That's cool. That's cool. Don't worry about it. I said, all right. I said, no problem. He said, yeah, you know, that's, we're good. We're good. Right. <laughs> He goes, we're, we're, we're good. I said, nah, we're good. We're good. He goes, uh, okay, all right. And he walks Ooh. off. Listen, he came in 20 minutes later, grabbed his chair. Two or three of his little buddies that were also there grabbed their chairs, and they all left. It was just me, and like a couple minutes later, all the, a couple other guys walk in, then a couple of Cho's walk in, and we're all sit there, and we watch. Guys are like, dang, bro, what happened? I'm like, nah, I mean, he was just playing. It's fine. It's not a big deal. A couple days later, Cook comes up to me. He goes, can I talk to you in the in the uh, in the wash room where they had like, you know, the mops and shit. Right. And I go, yeah, what's up? He walks in and he goes, you really didn't know? And I went, no. I said, I always assumed. He goes, nobody's ever said nothing. I said, nobody ever said nothing. And I said, what happened really? I said, because your numbers don't work, make sense. He, and he was, fuck. He goes, what did I say? I said, bro, you've been in state prison three times. You've told me about multiple arrests. I said, I know that your criminal history is off the chart. There's, I said, you should have been at at, at, at least 25 years. He goes, bro, I was looking at life. He goes, I was looking at life. If it was drugs, yes. Right, right. And and what well, well, it was it was it was he was caught with meth and he was caught with a gun. And he's been to pr- oh, he's done. Life. Right. Life. And he sat there and I and I said, so I, and he goes, you know, and he said, so I go, so you cooperated? And he's like, Yeah, but you don't understand what happened. I said, I don't need to understand. Like he's trying to, you know, they always like, you don't understand. It was my cousin Pookie. Pookie told on me first. Yes, and it is, and great, it, it's always line. some reason that makes sense. And I don't care what your reason is. It, it, you cooperate. I could care less. Yeah, it's retaliation. Yeah, the guy told on me first. And I told Right. Him I had no yeah. choice. He was lying. And my, they were threatening my, they were going to, I only how did about, it for my wife. You and, do the time. How about you just didn't want to do the Yeah, time? I'm okay with, you didn't want to do the, I did, I couldn't do life. Right. I couldn't do it. Amen. Sorry. I got to spread it around. You got to do five years. He can do 10 of it. You can do seven. Is it wrong? Yes. And I feel bad, but now I don't have to do life and I'm okay with that. You know, cause trust me, I can't be sitting for the rest of my life saying, yeah, I'm a stand up guy though. A little consolation when you can't make commissary. Um, so anyway, he, uh, uh, so yeah, I was like, I don't care. And he had some stupid story. I don't know if you've ever heard this one where the guys will say that they buried guns because they knew someday they'd get busted and they would be able to tell the DEA where there were guns and they'd give them a, a reduction for the guns. But really, they were my guns I had bought and planted there. So I didn't tell on anybody. I just told them where there was some Stop. Stop it. That's a good line. That's though. a good line, but it doesn't work. That's not what happened. Like, it, that's a lie. Right. It Like, really? And those guns that you gave them resulted in an arrest? No. No. Stop. No. It helped further an investigation they were already working on? No. It helped. Okay, stop. But, but I was like, look, whatever, bro. Later on, he told me what really happened. Um, so anyway, look, listen, even his, the guy that got him messed up uh, on his charge was also there. So anyway, that was one thing that almost like, what it, did it come to a, a, an argument or not? I mean, a fight or not? I don't know, but it was always comical because I was that close to getting the living shit kicked out of me. <sighs> the, another, I only had two other incidences. One, incidences? Incidents. Yeah. Sorry. Um, another time I was, when I first got locked up in the cell with two guys. In the medium? No, no. I was, I was, when I first, it was in the Marshall's holdover. Oh. I don't know if I ever told you this. Another eye incident, by the way. Um, so I'm sitting there. I'm, I'm, we're, we're, it's three guys in this little tiny room. Three, no, four of us. At one point, three and then four is two bunks in a tiny little room. Um, one of the guys, and you're basically laying down. All day. You can't get up and walk around. There's nowhere. There's as soon as you get off your bunk, there's a toilet. That's it. So the other time was like I was in this cell. We'd been locked up forever. And the one guy's bipolar. Big black guy, bipolar. Um, and, and so I remember we I had gotten down to go to the bathroom and there was a mirror in the bathroom. You know, it's a, it's that shiny chrome. Yes. And I'm so I'm, I'm one ta- piece of toilet and sink. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. So I'm taking a piss and I look up 
And the guys, I can see him looking at me while he's, while I'm pissing. No big deal. You know, you're, it's a small room. You got to look somewhere, but he's, you know, anyway, I glanced up at him and I don't think anything of it. I'm still pissing. And I glance up and he's looking at me again. He goes, what you looking at? I went, I'm not looking at anything. You're looking at me. You saying I'm, you saying I'm a, a, a punk? That's what you're saying? That's what you're saying? And he jumps up. I'm pissing. <laughs> he jumps up. What gets in my face while I'm going to the bathroom? And I'm like, whoa, whoa, hey, hey, you saying I'm a punk? That's what you're saying? You saying I'm a punk? And keep on, everybody knows the guy's a loose cannon. Right. And he jams his finger in my eye. And like, boom. And I went, what the fuck? I'm pissing. <laughs> I go, what the fuck? And he's like, I ain't no punk. I ain't no punk. And I finish. Zip up, turn around and walk away. The guy's like six foot four. He's a giant. He had to be over 350 pounds. I mean, he's a massive guy. Worked out. Every time they went to wreck, he went out and worked out. Damn. So I get back in my bunk. He went for like the next 30 minutes or so. He's walking around like this, you know, flexing, pacing in the room. There's barely any room to pace. Like, I mean, he's literally, it's like two steps this way, three steps that way, and you're done. Or you're tripping over the toilet. And he's like, I ain't no punk. I don't give a, I ain't no punk, man. I am. And he's just working. Him, and I'm sitting there staring at him. I'm sitting Indian style on my bunk, top bunk in the corner, waiting for him to come at me so I can get, wedge myself in the corner and just kick him back. Right. <clears throat> this guy's spitting uh, little bits of spit coming out of his mouth. The, the other guy that's in the room is down there looking up like, fuck, like he's nuts. After a couple, oh, after like 30 minutes or so, he calms down. He goes and he lays down. He woke up like an hour or so later, got up and said, man, I'm sorry about that, man. I just, you know, I, 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 I sometimes I get in my head and I, I can't, I can't stop the, I, I'm sorry, man. I was out of line. I was, and I'm looking at him thinking, this guy's insane. Like the, I had just been locked up maybe a month or so. Maybe, sh- sh- might, I don't know, might've been. I had now that more I think about it, it had to be had to be about a month, maybe two months in that because I was in Atlanta. So that was one time, and oh then, um, well, I I have you you have yeah you have another one. I'll tell you my other one, which is funny. Yeah, well, the the one in the pen where I actually got, well, I I want to say assaulted because I I'd been in a couple of fights. One was like over. Like I was changing the t- after I'd been there a while, I was changing the TV and me and the guys arguing and, and the guys up in my face and I push him back and then we start going at it, you know, but that's probably even because we were hugging and locked up. But <clears throat> um, the one time I was assaulted was like I had been there about two months and I had put something together because I was fighting my case. So I had put something together and I needed copies. And I didn't have a copy card. So somebody told me that the woman working, this was in the library in the evening time, Miss Green, he said, Miss Green makes copies for inmates. I've seen her do it. I said, okay, well, cool. So I go and she's in there with another inmate making copies, right? So I said, Miss Green, is it possible I can get some copies made? You know, and she's like, what makes you think I make copies? I said, yeah, somebody told me that you'll make copies for us and we need copies. She goes, that sounds like some lieutenant sent you and put you up to it. I do not make copies for inmates. I do not make copies for inmates. I said, okay, no problem. And left. <laughs> right. Like I'm like, okay, I don't know what's got into her. So I go back and sit down. I go, hey, she want to make the copy. So I sit down and then all of a sudden, two guys approach me. Like, now, both of these guys are muscular, but one's kind of, about 180 pounds muscular, and one's about 270 pounds muscular, right? And they come in, and, you know, the 270-pound muscular guy, he's, he's just punching the air, <laughs> pacing Here's back and thing, forth. None of these guys are brilliant. None of these guys are brilliant. Right? So I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm looking, and he's punching the air. And then the little skinny muscular guy, he, he kind of sits on top of a desk, and he goes, dude, he goes, how long have you been in the pen? I said, I've been here about two months. He goes, you ever been to Penn before? I'm like, nah, this is my first time. He's like, dude. He's like, you just fucked us up. I said, what? He goes, we were getting copies from Miss Green, and you come in there and say that to her. 
And now she don't want to make copies for us anymore. That was our business. Now we were making money. I'm like, my bad, man. I go, I didn't know. He's like, you didn't know. It don't matter if you didn't know or not. You just cost me $50, 60 $80. I'm like, all right. I mean, you don't think you get anybody else to make copies? He's like, nah, man. Nah, you're going to have to pay me my money. You don't cost me my money. You're going to have to pay me. So I'm like, okay, explain this again. He's like, you just walked in there on Miss Green, said what you said. Now she don't want to make copies for me. And I was getting copies made for multiple people on the compound. And you done shut me down. You ruined my hustle. Yeah, you ruined my hustle. You owe me $80 in commissary. So I'm going to bring you. When do you go to Stowe? I said, uh, I think I go next Wednesday. I'm going to bring you a list and you're going to get me my shit. <laughs> right? So I'm like, okay. And I do that because I have to process. I'm not the type of person that like violence is not my first yeah. reaction. And when someone tells me something that I can't quite grasp, I'm thinking to myself, I need to process this because like I don't quite understand what's going on. So... Yeah, let me think my way out of this. Yeah, and just, so, well, just say, okay, cool, and walk away. I'm going to try and figure out what's going on. Right. How do I get out of this? Yes. That's ex- it's got to be a logical you. way to Thank do you. this. Thank you, because this doesn't, it, all of this doesn't make sense. Right. Uh, what just transpired? I don't even know what the hell is going on. So do, as the week progresses, they bring me a list for $80. Like, okay, you need to pick this up. Blah, blah. I'm saying, now, hold on a second. As I'm asking questions, I'm like, so you're saying I owe you money. Because Miss Green cut off your business. Right. I said, if she would have just changed her mind and decided not to do it, who would owe you money? He's like, well, if she just changed her mind, we'd just be out. But you the one made a change of mind, so you owe us this money. So as I'm processing it, I'm like, wait a minute. I'm getting extorted. Right. So then I told myself, if I pay this, this is probably the, the first of many payments. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm not going to pay it. I'm absolutely not going to pay it. I said, I might as well go to the shoe. I'm thinking I could check in. But then I'm like, you know, I have some skills. I can hit back. I probably could take an ass whooping. You know what I'm saying? As long as they don't kill me, whatever. I just make it out in public. And I'm going to scream for help like a bitch if it all gets out of hand. You know what I'm saying? I know how to handle this. <laughs> right? <laughs> so the day comes. I'm supposed to have the groceries. I meet in the library that night. And they're like, uh, you got our food? I said, no. I don't. They say, well, and they're making excuses for me, so I'm thinking I'm going to get out of this anyway. This is, it's a bunch of yap, you know? They're like, well, what happened? Your money didn't come in? You need some more time? What happened? Right? <laughs> so I'm like, nah, man, I just decided I don't, I don't think I'm going to pay it. They look at each other and they leave. I'm like, okay, that was easy. So the next day, next night in the library, they come in. The both of them together, but the, the routine starts over. So the big guy's coming in, he's punching there. <laughs> Little guy comes. Uh, let me holler at you right quick, bro. So you cost us money, and you say you ain't finna pay us. Is that what? You, is, that, is, that, is, that what is that what's going on? I said, hey, listen, man, because in my mind, I'm like, this has got to be a joke. This yeah. is not real. It's a stand up routine. It's <laughs> a stand up routine. So I said, I said, listen, bro. I said, if my mistake cost you money, right, I apologize. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not paying you $80 for some money you got on the come. I'm just not going to get in the middle of that. Right. So he's like, I tell you what. He goes, let me holler. Let me holler at you. Right here. Instead of us talking and arguing in front of everybody, let me holler at you right quick in this other room. Stupidly, like it, it played on my intelligence so much that I went into the other room you thought you could talk him out of it well i thought it was over i thought this is all a joke this is not real right so i go into the other room right and both guys come in and they close the door then i come to realize no camera yeah no camera i come to realize i'm like hmm this just went bad i go when i came in here there was probably about four guys in that library as lookout you know it's like the situation processed as now he started back talking he's like he go like he go. Unfortunately, because he's giving a spiel. This is like I'm finna whoop your ass, spiel. Unfortunately, we can't have people thinking they can just do us any kind of way. No, he's in a spiel, but I'm processing in my mind like this was a big mistake. Me walking in this room, and if other people find out that we let a MF 
get us in a situation. And I'm like, how do I get out of this room? <laughs> so that's why we got to make an example of you. This is all processing at once. So I told him, I said, hey, so in my mind, I'm like, I need to get loud, right? And I need to get close to that door where that guy's punching <laughs> to get out of here. So he's talking and I cut him off. Cause I really I wasn't listening to him anyway. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause you're made, you're made, I'm like, hey, 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 huh? <laughs> I said, hey. I said, listen, man, I'm gonna holler at y'all later. I ain't got time for this. Well, the dude punching the air, when I stop him, he stops and looks, and he comes over and he cocks me right in the like I watched the whole thing. He runs over to me and he punches me right in the face. Boom! <laughs> I go down. <laughs> So luckily they're not kicking. They decide they're going to bend over and beat like they're going to beat me up traditionally. So they're bending over to beat me up. So I get in the fetal position, but I'm yelling, oh, stop, stop. Oh, this is a by the way, this is a library. So it's a where I'm at is a back book room. So I grab a cart full of books and pull it down on myself. So there's books. So they're punching books and everything to hit me. Right. And I'm screaming. Well, then they go, hey, I hear somebody on the outside say, hey. So the guy, the big guy that's punching me, he stops and he looks back. So I'm in the fetal and I look and I see him look the other way. And like an idiot, I punch him boom, in the face. He's like, oh, he goes down. But the other guy, they're beating me up. Then they both stop and they run out of the room. Well, the CO comes in. I'm bloody. They don't, they don't break anything. I'm just bloodied up in the yeah, face, yeah. you know, bleeding from my lips and teeth. What happened? Who jumped you? Who was it? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I, I don't know who it was. <laughs> so they, they Little Jimmy <laughs> and Miami. They like, actually. <laughs> you track them down, right? Somebody told on them because they nice. actually got them both and me. And I'm the only one that came out. Right. Nobody even liked those guys. When they, well, they like, got the cameras, they can see these two guys. Those guys probably just ran down the hallway and it's pretty <laughs> obvious. Like, oh, and they, it's, it's a pen. It's like, what? <laughs> About four or five hundred guys. How many yes. people were there? Like, no, it was uh fifteen hundred. It was a pretty. Oh, big that's pin. a big pin. It but was still pin. somebody in the library is like, that's Thompson. He's in B seven. <laughs> that's Jimmy. <laughs> but but that was like my experience of being jumped. But like like I said, the the whole time I thought I'm like this is a joke. Did I'm you, like, what the hell is going on? Did you go to the shoe? Yes, I went to the shoe for about a week. Um, what had happened is I think SIS had told me that these guys. They've been jumping. And I don't understand how they've been jumping people because they were really lousy fighters. All right. Like when I went down, they should have kicked me to sleep. But for some reason, they wanted to stoop down and, and hit me with their fists. I'm like, what are y'all doing? This is not even the right way to do this. <laughs> you got me down. Kick me. <laughs> yeah. When I, when I pulled the book cart on me because I, I just grabbed. I didn't pull it when I fell. Like when they're hitting me, I grab up and I grab it and pull it down on me. So right. it was it was strange. It was weird. So but it wasn't that bad. What happened with those guys? They shipped them. Oh, okay. they told me they were problems anyway. They were they were into something else. They were bullying, and that wasn't their forte. Right. So this was just this was just an excuse to get rid of them yes. anyway. We we knew they were into something, but this gives us an excuse yes. to ship them. Yes. Make them somebody else's problem. The, the SIS guy was a black guy, and he's like, "You just got here for tax fraud." He goes, "We're shipping." He goes, "Listen, man." He goes, "I've had problems with." He he mentioned it. Matt, I just, I swear I can't remember. The, right. Either they were in the tickets, gambling, or what, they were into something that he's like, listen, I've been wanting to get rid of those two idiots forever. Right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> so, right. and the rumor was I got extorted, but you know, I'm like, I never paid it. Yeah. I, ha I actually had, look, so like I went to the medium, right? Like I, I, I never had any problems with the medium, right? right. Um, you know, other than being attractive. So, <laughs> Uh, but when I got to the low, so I've been to the low maybe two, three weeks. I, I think I've told you this. So this this guy comes over. This guy's like six foot six, by the way. Huge, like really tall, muscular guy. Comes over. I want to say his name was, uh, God. oh, B. They called him B. So B comes over to me one day. I'm in, I'm in my cell with my cellie sitting there. Right. And I was sitting there writing. B comes, when you say the extortion, it reminds me of this. So B comes over, he walks in my cell, and I'll, I'll make the story quick. He says, he walks right up to me. I'm sitting in a chair writing. You know, I'm wedged between the, but like, he can't come too close. Like, he's here. Comes up and he goes, he goes, hey, I want, I, 
I'm already sitting down. You're six foot six. You're already a foot taller than me. And I'm sitting down. So I'm like, I'm like, yes. yeah, what's up? And he goes, he said, this is how this is going to work, bro. I'm going to give you, I forget what he said, 50 or let's say, let's say a hundred bucks. He goes, I'm going to give you a hundred bucks, a hundred dollars worth of, he goes, I'm going to give you, no, here's how it's going to work. You're going to give me a hundred dollars worth of commissary uh, a month. He said, ain't nobody going to bother me or ain't nobody going to bother you. And I went, oh yeah? And he goes, yeah. I said, that's how it's going to work. He goes, that's how it's going to work. And I went, okay, so you got a list? I guess he ex- was expecting some pushback. Right. I go, you got a list? He goes, like, no, nah, I, I, this ain't no joke. And I went, no, I understand. You, you're going to, you can make sure nobody bugs me. I give you a hundred bucks. Yeah. I said, all right, well, give me a list. <laughs> and I sat there and I went, is there anything else? And he's like, Nah, man. I said, all right, well, give me a list. And he goes, no, what you need a list for? I said, well, what am I, am I just going to randomly get you $100 worth of stuff? I mean. <laughs> what do you need a list for? I said, if it's up to me, it's going to be like copy cards and like, you know, dandruff shampoo. Like, I mean, I need a list. I need to know what you want. And he went, and you could tell he was just like, something's really wrong here. Right. And he goes. I don't know about no list. I said, yeah, man, you write up a list and I'll get it for you. I, no, I go, write up a list. I said, make sure you put your name and what what cell you're in uh, to. Now, what you need that for? I said, well, so that I can, when I bring it to the counselor and ask him what I'm supposed to do about this this six foot six black guy trying to extort me for a hundred bucks a month. I said, so we can go straight to your cell. I said, and have a talk with you. And he looked at me and he goes, Oh, that's how it is? You want to rat me out? I said, of course I'm going to rat you out. I said, look at this compound. I said, there's only two kinds of people here, rats and chomos. That's it. I said, less than 5% of, the, of this entire, uh, I said, less than 5% of the people here didn't cooperate. I go, this is a protective custody compound. I said, now, maybe you're one of the stand-up guys. I said, I don't know. I found out later, by the way, he'd been back to court like five times, four or five times to cooperate. He started with a life sentence. So, you know, I didn't know that at the time, though. I'd just gotten there. Like, I'd seen him around, but I don't know who he is. I don't talk to this guy. So I said, I said, so he said, oh, you're just going to rat me out like that? I said, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. I said, I didn't come here to make friends. I said, and I said, I will rat out anybody I have to to survive and get out of this place. I'm not here to make friends. I said, so give me your list so we can all have a conversation. He goes, oh, that's going to go bad for you. I said, I don't give a shit how it goes. I tell you, what's not going to happen is you're not going to get your hundred your hundred bucks. Now, luckily, it was a low and not a medium. So he didn't attack me. He said, oh, that ain't going to work out good for you. So, and he just like walked off. Right. <laughs> I never heard him from him again. Like I'm walking by him and he's looking at me. And I'm just, or I'm just not looking at him at all. It's like you glance up, see him, and I just keep your head down, keep walking. Like I'm waiting for it to go bad. Never did. Never did. What ended up happening was I actually had a two man cube, and I was going to move from the top bunk to the bottom bunk, and my celly was going to the drug program. This was like a month or so later. And literally, this guy, so this guy named Rambo, who was a, a, a Puerto Rican guy, when my celly moved out, he moved in. And you don't just move in somebody's cell. You, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like, you right. know that. And first of all, I was supposed to go down. So he moves in. I'm furious. And I go, what the, what the fuck's going on, bro? What do you mean? You just come in here? And, he, and he's like, he's like, oh, that's the way it is, man. Oh. Rambo. Rambo. That's yeah. the guy's name. I'm thinking oh. the guy that extorted you, but go ahead. No, no. This is another guy. All right. So what happens is I end up going in and com- bitching and moaning in the white TV room. Man, this fucking uh, piece of shit. You know, he this, he that. So I have this whole thing. And these guys, this one guy's like, hey, bro, my celly's moving. Or I'm going to be leaving. You can move myself. I said, no, man, I can't stay one night. I got to figure something out right now. And the guy goes, let's go talk to my celly. So we got talk- I go to this guy's celly, and I convince his celly, who's a sex offender, to swap bunks with me. Right. So while Rambo's taking a nap, we actually move our stuff so now he's stuck in a room with a chomo, which, you know, he ain't happy about at all. So we swap, swap him out. And I actually paid this, the, the, the sex offender. I paid him 30 bucks. Like I went and got him $30 in commissary. He was like, oh, what if you don't give me the commissary? He said, bro, I said, I'm not like that. I don't give a shit what you're here for. I said, I'm going to get you the $30. I'm not like these other guys. I'm going to get you the 30 And I did. I got him 30 bucks. You know what was bothering me about that? What? Was that 
it was basically like 15 bucks worth of underwear. And I know that when he was walking around the compound after that, he was walking around the compound and I would glance over and we'd make eye contact. And I know that he knew that I knew that you're wearing my underwear. I bought you those underwear. Like it was a weird thing. Like if I felt uncomfortable after that. Did you? Did you? Did, did I what? Did, did you ever say anything about your wearing? No. <laughs> I was like, well, no. At least, he, at least now he had I, My fear is that, yeah. My at fear is he's he thinking He's thinking to himself, I'm wearing your underwear you yeah. bought me. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, not good. So, um, but what happened was, so we swap it and the guy was furious about it too, bro. Like, I mean, literally was whole, like everybody's laughing at him now. Like, oh, you thought you were cute. Now you're stuck with Chomo. Anyway, <laughs> What's so funny is so then like a couple days later, I'm walking down the hallway and that guy B that tried to extort me, right. we're walking by, by each other and he sees me, walks up, he goes, hey, Cox, hey, Cox. And I remember thinking, fuck this fucking guy. What's going to happen now? <laughs> I look up and I go, yeah, what's up? He said, that shit you did with the chomo? And I go, yeah. He goes, that was a veteran move, bro. <laughs> veteran move. And he fist bumps me and walks and he goes like, hey, you're all right. And walks off. That's a veteran move? Yeah. <laughs> We're buddies after that. It was, it was with Rambo, who was the asshole. Yeah, he's the same guy. You know, it's funny. B's the same guy. He was Trump had been just become president, right? A few months earlier, and um, B was bent over the the fountain machine drinking water, and I came walking up behind him, and he turned around. And he looked at me. He goes, "Hey, Cox, I don't like a white man coming up behind me like that." And I said, well, don't worry. I said, six months of Trump being president, you're going to have your own water fountain. <laughs> and he went, oh, <laughs> man. He goes, oh, I said, nice, right? Right. He goes, oh, he starts laughing. He didn't know he was torn between. That was a good one. And hey. And, <laughs> hey, that was a good one. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, I had a, I had a so question we'll, about, do you remember, I think it was a chomo at the medium. It was a kid who looked like he was about, 13, 14. Absolutely. Absolutely. He had the shorts on. Remember that day he had the, just the shorts and no shirt and sucking a lollipop? Do you remember that? Hey, the white like, guys came to him and told me he had to buy them all, all uh, to stay. He had to buy them all tennis shoes when he first got there. Right? Really? Is that Yes. Yes. Little white guy. Yes. And, and they moved him to the low. Oh, I, I I don't know if he was there when I got there. I don't, I don't remember. But, but what, wasn't he there? He was, what was, what was it? He was making, they were making like, oh, he was getting, he was getting younger. He wasn't a teenager. He was like a grown some, man. Yes. Yeah, but he's getting young girls. A girls or guys? Well, I don't know what he's, he's getting. I thought it was young girls to make pornos with other kids and they were videoing. It wasn't that the crime? Like, yes. it was actually like hands Because he, on. they like, tried to get video. him in the, somebody tried to get him in the laundry and the laundry lady said, I don't want anybody here with that type of charge. Right, right, right. She's just like outright, she goes, listen. She goes, I don't want anybody working in here with that type of charge. That's exactly what she said. But I, because I, I thought he went to the low. Because when I went to the shoe, he was in the shoe the whole time. And I heard them tell him, we finally got you approved to go to the low. His mom was going nuts. I forgot his name. Bro, he, listen, there were so many of those guys there. Or so many sex offenders. But you there. never saw him again. No, and listen, they, if they could have, or they could have run the whole compound. Like they could have told you, you ain't going to the yard. I mean, there were so many of them. Yes. But they're all so scared and so timid, and they're all, you know, it's they're embarrassed and they're ashamed and they're, you know, listen. But then there were some of them that weren't. Some of them are literally ready to argue with you that like it's totally acceptable to be looking at pictures or or talk or having sex like. Back in the, you know, back a hundred years ago, and you could be a 45 year old man and be having sex with a 13 year old. What's the problem? It was like, what are you doing, bro? You know, so it, some of them were just boisterous and it was like, bro, you understand that you're, you're lucky you're at a compound because let's face it. If they went to like Yazoo or so, most places, no, you're not watching TV. No, you're not even, don't even look in the TV room. Like you're not coming. They would let these guys. Jessup had a couple of them. Right. Jessup, Jessup medium. Had a couple of, but I think the lows are inundated. But oh yeah, that yeah, yeah. Coleman low, it was coddled them. Massive, they massive. coddled them. Who was somebody? When I was in the shoe, is when I met people. I remember it was it was a Spanish guy told me that the S when you got there, the SIS told them that they had it was like an experiment, and they told they said the SIS would tell them we don't think that you're right for this place. There are only certain types of people we allow to be here and you have to be 
like very accepting. They they coddled them at that Coleman Low. They coddled yeah, they, them. They they that because they had Conrad Black there. Yeah, they told me. They they to, he told me, look, Cox, you're gonna be all right. He said, you're gonna be all right. Just follow the rules, and as long as you don't have a problem with our indigenous population, he said, you're gonna be okay. I said, oh, I said that's right. I said I heard you guys got like three or four hundred sex offenders here. He goes, no, it's it's like half. Wow. He goes, it's like half the people here have sex offender charges. He goes, so if you got a problem with that, I said, man, I said I don't, man, I, I just want to do my time, bro. I just want to be left alone. I said, as long as they don't bother me, I'm fine. I said, I could care less. And he was like, bother, they didn't bother you? No, I was too old. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now when I shaved, you know, <laughs> this, if I shaved. They're like, and, you hey, know, cutie. You know. But anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was, uh, so what was what was the other one? The other. Oh, my other ever, story other... was the car story about the, um, where they all gathered up. But I had been there about a year and a half. So after about, so really this incident. This is the one you have to use for the, try and figure out how to use this for the hook. Well, like this was, this was well, gonna, well, 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 this, this incident changed my statue because like. That your status or your status. Sta- well, sta- yeah. Sta- yeah, yeah. Statue, statue, yeah, you don't have a statue. statue. No, 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 maybe that's not the. Statues. Status. Maybe, stature. 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 Thank you. That's Where, um, like I kind of went from maybe follower to leader because so many people afterwards said, man, thank you. Thank, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened? What, right. what? So um, they're like, normally they set the alarm that we have, we're having a meeting. So if, if, if two cars are going to go at it, like while I was there, the Florida car went at it with the Crips when I was at Beaumont, which was, I had just got there and that went down. And there were stabbings involved. So people from Florida, we had to work it out. Another time we went, Florida has issues. We, were, we, we went at it with the Spanish. While I was there, against the Spanish, against the Crips, we, against the Texas car, and against the Northwest car. So Florida would get into it. These Florida guys had major issues. So at one point, we were going to get into it with the guys from D.C. That is actually the nightmare situation in the pen. Is the D.C. because the D.C. guys are so vicious. Well, they're basically and, and, state inmates. Yes. And, and so they're all scummy. They're just. Yeah, yeah. Because so, D.C., they don't have like a prison. Pod. Like if you commit a crime in D.C. It's federal. It's federal. Even if it's a misdemeanor. You could be stealing hubcaps going to feds. Serious? Like it could be anything. You're going to the Fed, no matter what. It's Fed, 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 Fed. And so you, you know get the these Feds guys. did that now to the Indian reservations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They those guys started showing up left and right, left and right. Yeah, they did it to the. But anyway, so we were going to go to war with DC. So it, it, it's going around the compound. We're going to war to D, with DC. So someone at, and and this is like serious. Like it's it's not just one day we're saying this and the next day it's over. Like they're prepping people to the point where I'm, they come to me and they're like, do you have a knife? And I'm like, what? They go, you need a knife. So dude gave me a knife. Like, um, I don't know how he made this thing, but it was like a shard of metal about this long blade sharp that I cut my finger like, holy piss. And he's, they're, they're giving me stab lessons and he's showing me how to strap it to my hand. Like strap the thing to your hand because blood's very slippery, and as yes. soon as you get some blood, it'll slip out of your hand. Yep, that's what I. That's what I heard. Yes, like, oh, I wouldn't know. It was serious. Like this was going to go down. Right. So I'm like, when, where? It was supposed to be on a Friday. So we have one meeting, and this is in in a unit in a guy's cell during the move. So we go during the move, we go into this guy, and this guy's name is um, they call him Ice Man. They call him Ice. But um, he's a big snaggletooth punk, right? He has a he had a, a a boyfriend, but he was gay, but he was supposed to be the leader of the car. This is the guy that's supposed to guide us and talk to a couple of people. He was the one that that told me to go and beat up the guy for jacking in the kitchen. You know, he worked with other cars. I had seen him put out a couple of incidents i didn't really like him he barely even talked to me i don't think he liked me either but we, he was there so we we're going to see ice man who was the, the the car leader so we get in this cell so he's like hey listen 
And he's giving the spiel like, listen, like like the battle speech, like not all of us are going to make it. <laughs> <laughs> right? So all the thing I hear is we're going to war with the DC car. So I get in the cell and he's like, all right, all of us ain't going to make it. He goes, and some things are worth spending the rest of your life or giving your life for. But one thing ain't going to happen, man. These people ain't going to just do us any kind of way. This is a vicious fucking group. They done tried us and we ain't finna put up with it. Yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. Listen, we men. We represent Florida. We represent a big state and we ain't gonna go down like this. So y'all get ready Friday morning. We're gonna meet them on the rec yard. We got a day and a half. Call your people, let them know because this is finna go down. It's going down in this mug, going down. My soldiers, yeah, yeah, all right, yeah. All right, when they call a move, y'all get out of here. All right, no problem. Cool, all right. So we're all standing around quiet like, yeah, it's a murmur. So I said, hey, uh, I have a question, right? So, uh, uh, uh. yeah, what's up, man? I said, um, why are we going to war? I said, what happened? I go, ain't nobody ever told me what happened. Why are we going to war? Iceman put his head down. Because one of them dudes tried to go after my boy. I said, uh, then it, no, no more murmur, because the murmur tried to go after my boy. I said, by your boy, you mean that dude, that gay guy that was your celly? He's like, yeah. Man, we got to let them dudes know, man, they can't just try anybody. Man, we representing Florida. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. I'm like um, I don't want to go to war over a homosexual. <laughs> I'm like, I wasn't poking him in the butt. So yeah, I'm sure you're, you're. I'm sure he's. I'm sure your punk's a, a wonderful person. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, that's exactly. If I would have said it, I'm sure he's a good piece of ass. I, I, I bet because he looks cute, but. I'm not going to do life or kill anybody or die. Because someone disrespected your... Because someone your, disrespected your punk. I, yeah. really, I want to. Don't get me wrong. I, I hear you. <laughs> Unacceptable. <laughs> and I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm ready to compose a harshly worded email. <laughs> not stab someone. Why didn't I say that? So I'm unwrapping the hand. I'm like, um, y'all going to have to count me out, Right. Oh man, you back out of this, you out the car completely. I can live with that. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I mean, that seems reasonable because in the future, I don't want to be called to go to war. Now, I said, now if they attacked someone in, like one of our friends, if it's yes. it a genuine issue, yes, right. So you know what, what I'm saying? Because I talked to a, I talked to a, a bunch of. Them. Matter of fact, I still talk to a bunch of them. Right. But I'm not going to war over your punk's not even from Florida. Right. <laughs> So what? So what did the other guys do? Murmur. So I said, I'm out. He's like, well, then you walk alone. This is what he told me. You walk alone. I said, I walk alone. I said, I walk alone. I'm like, I'm cool with it. But you've been there several years by now. No, I've been I, there about oh, two years, going on two years. Yeah, okay, two I years. I said, I walk alone, right? So when they call a move, I leave, right? So they, when they leave, nah, let that nigga go, blah, blah, blah. You know, they're talking. I was talking to him, blah, 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 blah. So when they come out, right? All of a sudden, the Friday attack is off, right? And then people are telling me, like, uh, I'm with you, man. I'm like, I wasn't finna go to war over a punk. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Like, everybody's telling me that and thanking me for clarity. Because, believe it or not, most of us didn't know what we were fighting for. Right. <laughs> but I like that. I'm so. ready to do a harshly worded email. <laughs> I got Letting your those back yeah. in writing. That's right. And if they jump you about him, yeah. or if I see someone kissing him, I'm willing to say something. I'm definitely going to Unacceptable. <laughs> Unacceptable. Lips off that guy. Lips off that guy. <laughs> what was He's his taken. Name? What was the guy's name? The, oh, the Ice. Iceman. Ice yeah. Iceman. That, that's, you know damn well Iceman loves you. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, no, no. Yes, not gonna yes. Happen. So it didn't happen. So I kind of, my statue went up. Because so many people agreed because they didn't know they were blindsided by that whole thing. It was, it was unbelievable. 
I couldn't believe it. Like, I'm thinking, like, holy mackerel. Like, I've never been to war. I'm about to go and meet with D.C. guy. Probably get slaughtered. And, and I'm like, I don't even know why. And what, what surprised me is nobody was asking. Right. It's like, hey, we're doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're good soldiers. You don't, you don't ask. You don't have the, the political reasons behind the decision. You're a soldier. You're a button. You're a button man. No. Uh, a button. <laughs> but, uh, button man. Oh, not, button man. Not button. Not, <laughs> no, not, you're a button. But, uh, button. Uh, are we doing this for a piece of ass? You know what I'm <laughs> oh, man. I, oh, I was going to say. So listen. So the other one with me is this. Is that there was a guy named Billy who was a, supposedly a biker. And, you know, and, and so Billy was in the low. And Billy, when he first got there, immediately started telling everybody, like, that, uh, you know, everybody's a punk. You know, oh, that dude's a punk. That dude's a chomo. Uh, all these fucking snitches around here. I'm a stand up guy. I'm this, I'm that. <laughs> Ellis Cook actually got so sick of listening to him because Ellis Cook was preaching the same thing. So Billy's preaching it. Ellis Cook, but they had an issue. Like they constantly were butting heads over the TV. You know what problems the TVs are. Yes. The TVs are huge problems. So they were constantly butting heads. Cook actually had somebody on the street look up Billy, look up his charges. And while they were, he was trying to figure out if he cooperated. While they were, he was looking to see if he cooperated, which he did. (laughs) He found out that Billy was a registered sex offender. He'd actually had sex with like a a 14 year old girl when he was like 32 or something, like one of his buddies, whatever, uh, um, kids or something. And he got charged with it and he actually had, I think he just got like probation or something. It's funny because in the feds, like if you look at a kid online in the feds, you get three, three year minimum mandatory to possibly 10 or 12 or five, whatever. But on the state level, if you actually get a hold of the kid and have sex with her, you get probation. (laughs) <laughs> so if I took a picture of her and put it on the line, five years. Right. But you just had sex with her. <laughs> oh, okay. So anyway, Billy, so Billy actually was a registered sex offender on the Florida website. So he actually so, cook somehow or another got the actually got the the flyer sent in and made copies of it and passed it out. So Billy was totally outed. And got an article that said talked about Billy being a, a cooperating witness. So I mean, Billy's like done. So anyway, but Billy's still he's acting like it's all bullshit. Like that, none of that's true. Anyway, he did admit the sex offender thing at some point. But the point is, one day we're and I used to mess with Billy all the time. Used to make he was always making wise cracks, and I'd make wise cracks back. Right. So I actually at one point. Like he would say stuff like, I remember one time some guy came in the TV room and sat down and we're all watching TV and the guy was like, he had just come out of the counselor's office and he's like, he's like, uh, yeah, man, I, 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 uh, I just got my halfway house date back. Uh, uh, they, got, they gave me nine months. Uh, I, I leave next month. Guys are like, man, good for you, bro. Good for you. Where are you going after that, man? I'm going to go stay with my family. I'm going uh, you know, to stay here. I'm, I'm going to try and get moved up to West Virginia or whatever. And Billy would throw in like, you know, yeah, I don't know if I'm, I ain't going to take no halfway house. I don't want no halfway house. And well, in Florida, the halfway houses won't take sex offenders. So right. you don't have it. You're acting like I don't want it. No, you don't have a choice. So stop that's, with that. But that's what you said. No, no. What I said was somebody said, uh, he, he, Billy then said, he's like, I'm not sure where I'm going to go on. I don't think I'm like, he's just talking to himself. Really? Nobody's to talk. He's like, I don't know. I might go stay with my, I, I ain't going to stay with my family. I don't know. I might, might stay with my, with my girl. I don't know. And I went, well, I know where you're not staying. And he goes, where? And I go, anywhere close to a church, a daycare, I said, or a, or a school like that. And everybody, I said, or a park. Everybody starts laughing. Fuck you, Cox. <laughs> Fuck you. And gets up and walks off or, you know, would stand up. And he'd jump up and yell, you Fuck you, Cox. And I just, ha, <laughs> ha. And I start laughing. And, you know, what are you going to do? He's, he'd walk off. As it got closer to him going home. I don't know what happened, but we keep, I'm still messing with them the whole time. Like this has been years going on. So that's just our relationship. Like don't say anything stupid around me. The way I looked at it is this. <laughs> I remember my ex-wife said, you would think that going to prison would have curbed your smart assness. It would have made you a <laughs> little did. bit humble. It and did. I, and I was like, 
No, I, I, I was like, well, you know, I realized right away that either I can be quiet my entire bit or I can make a wise crack every once in a while and get bitch slapped. I said, <laughs> I'm over the bitch slapping pretty quick. <laughs> But being quiet the whole time and not making these great comments that I make, I said, I can't do it. I just can't. I'll die of cancer. Never make it through the whole thing. You're keeping that bottled up, that's not right. I got to let it out. I just got to get smacked every once in a while. I'll just take it. And she was just like, you're such an idiot. So one day I'm sitting there. Billy Seat was behind me. And we're sitting there watching TV. And, you know, Billy said stupid. You know, people say stupid shit. And I remember this is the kind of stupid stuff he would say. And I'm sitting there watching the um, – watching TV and some hot, we were watching a country music video and there's a hot chick walking down uh, the beach and, and Billy goes, uh, Billy said something along the lines of, uh, you wouldn't know what to do with that, would you Cox? And I go, shit, I got a better chance of hitting that than you do. And he goes, man, I want to, I want to fuck something. I'll knock your, uh, your ass out and fuck you. And I go, shit, Billy. I said, I'm a little bit old for you. Plus I have my high school diploma and he jumps up and bam, bitch slaps me. like, and I was like, it so so hard, by the way. Billy's like six foot tall and two something. What is with you and the six foot people? It bothers me. <laughs> I'm five foot six and it irritates me. So, so you know, I listen, it hit me so hard. I like leaned forward. And you know what I actually thought happened? I thought someone had walked. You know, people walk with their chairs over their heads. Yeah. So I thought someone had walked in the door and dropped the chair on me. Really? Like I actually remember looking around for the chair. I was like, what? The chair, like they bounce. The plastic chairs bounce, will bounce, you know? So I'm waiting for the, it to bounce back and hit me again. And I, for a second, I was like, and then I realized, this motherfucker hit me. I jump up. I go, you motherfucker. Then, of course, he's also six foot something tall. And I'm right. thinking, what am I going to do? He's going to kill me. Um, so, and Billy's like, fuck you, you fuck. I go, fuck you, you chomo motherfucker. And so we're yelling back and forth. And he just turns around and storms off, thank God, because he'd have beat me like, like a small child. Um, Anyway, uh, yeah, he walked off, and so one of the guys looks at me, and he goes, bro, you okay? And I was like, huh? No, I'm fine. He goes, no, nah, bro, you're not fine. He goes, go, go look in the mirror. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I don't want to hear that. I mean, this is the moneymaker. <laughs> so I, I go straight in. <laughs> I, go, I go straight into the, uh, the bathroom and look. Bro, half my eye, bloodshot red. He blew out like the capillary or whatever they call that. I don't know. I'll get correct. I'm sure that's wrong. I'll probably get corrected in the in the comment section by 60 guys. They're like, oh, it's actually your such and such blood. (laughs) Whatever. So it blew it out completely red. So like the whole day, as I'm walking by the guards, I'm constantly turning, turning, turning. But keep in mind 95% of the compound. Either 50% of the compound are sex offenders, and the other 50%, 95% cooperated. Right. So basically out of every unit of 180 guys, if you do the math, you've got like three to five guys that didn't cooperate. So they're all snitches. Right. And all the chomos are snitches. They just didn't get a chance to cooperate because right. what are you going to say? You were on the computer like, boop, 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 like I got nobody to tell on. Right. Um, so what happens is uh, by the, by four o'clock count, they walk around, they do count right after count. They call, you know, Billy's name was like a something – well, you know, it was William something. Anyway, they call him William Telefaro or something. William Telefaro or whatever. And Matthew Cox come to the officers. And I'm like, ah, oh. I walk in and I, I walk in. I'm still keeping. I'm like, yeah, what's up? And the guy goes, no, 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 Cox. <laughs> he goes, Turn your head. And he goes, he looked at me and he goes, it was a guy from SIS. He goes, he said, yeah, I heard you were in a fight. I was, I said, no, I was not in a fight. I said a, a fight assumes I said, a fight means that I fought back. I said, I was assaulted like that. <laughs> Billy walks in the door and Billy's like, yeah, what's up? And, and I said, by him like that. <laughs> oh, listen, I'm, I already know I'm in trouble. I said, by fu- that motherfucker right there. And Billy's like, looked at me, he goes, fuck. And, and I said, bro. And the guy goes, they go, man, we got fucking, they've already have, they, they already got three or four people, people that weren't even in the room. They got three or four people already have written statements. We're talking about between, between whatever, 10 or 11 in the morning, right? And four o'clock, they've got like three or four written statements saying that there was a, that basically they said, they all were like, there was a fight. It wasn't a fight. I was just assaulted. You know, (laughs) Billy's like, yeah, it was a fight. So what? I said, it wasn't a fight. Stop saying it was a, it wasn't a fight. So yeah, you don't want to be in a fight because I could get shipped. Right. You know, I can't get, I don't want to get shit. My mom comes to see me. Fuck yes, that. Fuck yes. this piece of shit. So I'm ready to fucking cut your throat. 
your head clean off your body. Yeah, you got a problem. So I remember that we by the time we got on the um on the bus to be transformed, he's going, he's like, bro, just don't say nothing. I go, fuck you. I'm not fucking saying I already said something. I'm ready to say something, you fucking piece of shit. <laughs> fuck you, Cox. You know, it's fucking ridiculous. So that was when was that when I went to the pen? When you went to the pen. I went to the pen shoe. Oh yes. I went to the pen shoe. Right. Yeah. That oh. wasn't that bad, was it? No. No. Oh, the pen shoe? Yeah. Super nice. The the pen like by the time I get to the pen, terrified. I mean, ter like I'm sitting there, I'm all locked up. I remember when they drove us from the drove me from the from the low to the to the pen. Right. You know, the low, it's manicured. There's yes. trees. There's bushes. The they pen, have flowers. It's- Concrete. Everything is concrete. And I remember driving. I was like, I was driving. I was like, no manicured lawns here. And I'm sitting there. Two guards are keep looking back at me. The one guard like starts laughing. He goes, you're going to be all right, Cox. I said, I don't feel good about this. I don't get the warm fuzzies. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel good. He's like, you're going to be all right. I said, I don't know. I lived in, <laughs> I lived in there. You didn't see. There's no trees. No, no. It's, it's, oh, I hated it. Well, I went to the shoe. So, I mean, I go in the shoe, and it was so funny when they got in the shoe, uh, they had a bunch of guys in the, in, you know, in the rec yard area, area of the, where they let you out. Not the rec yard, but the rec yard for the shoe. Right. And there are guys, total faces tattooed, walking yes. around, yep. like chained up, walking around. <sighs> that's standard. That's standard. Oh, my, bro, I'm looking at these guys, and I'm like, they're like caged animals. And I remember I look at the guard. I go, bro, you can't put me in with one of those guys. He goes, oh, no, no, Cox, don't worry. You're not going. We've got a cell for you. You'll be fine. We're not putting you. I mean, with nobody. He's like, we're not even putting you in with a low guy. You're going to be by yourself. It's okay. That's nice. Oh, they were nice. I walked in. He goes, now, Cox, I I understand you like to read. I got you some books. He had like fucking 10 books. He goes, I got you some books. I've got you some this. I got you that. I've got this. Your clothes are here. You're this. He said, this is your cleaning supplies. He goes, don't drink this. Clo-. He goes, it's, it's uh, Ajax. He goes, don't drink the Ajax. <laughs> Looked at me and I go, is that an issue? He goes, yeah, it is an issue. Don't drink it. So don't drink. If you feel don't drink the Ajax. Yeah, don't drink the, like the, clo- the, they had the. Oh, to make themselves sick or what the fuck? What the fuck? I don't know what they're doing. How do you even drink? Like I mix up some water and drink it. He goes, don't. He goes, if you feel suicidal or I said, bro, I'm not. Trust me. He says a lot more people going out before me. I said, I'm good. I said, I'll make it through this. <laughs> like that. He was like, he started laughing. He said, okay, listen, the next day, out of there. I spent 22 hours in the shoe, back on the they, little. They ship, what's his name? Yeah. Oh, they put both of y'all out. Now, Billy went to the medium, and he was being released in like three to six months. So he did like three or four months in the shoe. They couldn't put him on the, in the medium. Because he's a sex offender, right. and he cooperated. Like it's like the tri- you know, so He could have fit at the medium. That medium. Yeah. Well, I mean, whatever. Anyway, Andy had just gotten into a fight, so they just released him. You know, <laughs> such a piece of shit. Such a piece of shit. Like this is. I hate. Look, here's what I can't stand. I can't stand hypocrites. This guy went around actively chasing around sex offenders. You're a sex offender. Actively telling, calling everybody uh, uh, snitches. You're, You're a snitch. snitch. That's that is the best. Like why human nature does that. If if you're cheating on your wife, then the natural thing for you to do is, is accuse your wife of cheating. Right. Yeah, it's just for uh, you know, uh, so if I if I'm a snitch, then I'm gonna say I hate snitches. Because maybe you'll think that, yeah, well, you right. hate snitches. And I went, well, he's snitch, he hates snitches. Well, and he's tr- here's the thing. He was desperately trying to fit in in a in a compound where one, you do fit in, but two, you don't need to fit in. Like at the low, like there are some, like at a pen, you would need to click up, especially at the beginning, right? Obviously. Well, maybe, but right. go ahead. But I'm saying, well, I mean, I would think you would, depending on who you are, you kind of need to click up. It, like at the pen, I'm saying at the at the low, you don't have to click up. No. You or cannot. You or can, really, really the medium. You don't have to click up in the medium. Right, right. But I'm saying at the low, especially, like you with the gang? No. You know, I'm going to sit where I want to sit. I'm going to do what I want to do. All you really have to do is don't gamble. Don't borrow anything. Be respectful to everybody. You're good. Stay away from the punks. Stay away from, yeah, exactly. Stay, yeah. All the things. Don't try and turn the TV. Like, uh, just yeah, follow the basic the rules. Like, the TV's a big issue. Gambling's a big issue. Borrowing stuff is, is a big issue. And the TV's an issue. Yep. 
you know, don't read books, yeah, read, stay in your cell, get a job. You're going to be okay. You're right. You'll, you'll make it. I taught the, uh, the real estate class, uh, for the whole time I was locked up at the low. <laughs> I, well, I taught it at the medium, obviously a couple of years, two, about what? Two and a half years at the about medium. Two years. The whole time I was locked up at the, at the low, I taught it. Wow. Um, God, I was so, I was on autopilot. I mean, I would walk in, I would have to walk it towards the end. I was walking in going, what did we go over last week? And they would go, oh, we talked about this and this and this. And I go, okay, that means so. And then I'd start because now I knew where I don't have a syllabus. I I was so (laughs) like, I just, and I would, they're literally, I had to do that because there were times I would walk in and start talking. Right. And guys would be like, yo, Cox, you, this is what you went over last week. Like (laughs) verbatim. I mean, literally I had it like down. I had the, the jokes down. I had the whole thing down. And I was like. Are you wow. serious? Why'd you guys let me get 10 minutes in? Oh, we, we thought you were going to do something. I don't know. I was like, fuck. What, what was the average size of your class? About 30, 30 guys. Wow. And, you know, it, it trickled down. As it went on? As it went on. I, I might start off with eight. Oh, yeah. Down no. To two. no, we would. My first class, would, guys were standing. The guys were literally standing up. Wow. Um, and then by, you know, halfway through, you're down to 20. And then by the last part of it, you've got 10 guys, maybe 15 Damn. guys that are diehard guys that, that really genuinely want, want to, to learn. But, you know, I'm, when I teach real estate, I'm entertaining. <laughs> and I'm breaking it down pretty, pretty clearly. Right. I, I mean, the real estate class, listen, I had it down so good. I literally had guys, when they were leaving, stopping me and going, Hey Cox, man, bro, it was a good class. Shaking my hand, like I change. Guys are telling me. Yeah. Other guys are telling me on the compound. They're like, "Hey, my Selly, come every time he leaves your class, he comes in. He says, man, I'm gonna be a millionaire. I'm taking cl- Cox's class, man. I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna make millions. This guy is. I, I mean, I he goes, used. You got these guys believing <laughs> yes. that they can make millions. I'm like, the think guy. about it. I, and I used to tell him this. This is the being a drug dealer. Okay. Converting that to real estate isn't that hard. No. It's because it's about the hustle. If you're a true hustler, you can do real estate. You just gotta change, switch your hustle. Right. Like it's the only these guys aren't afraid to go knock on a door and talk to somebody they don't know. They'll do that. Right. You, you get some forty year old white suburban woman. She's not going in those neighborhoods. No. She's not knocking on doors. She's not. These guys will. Yeah. I mean, it's it's it's. Anyway, so I, I had the whole class down. It was it was uh, it was really it was a great class. I could do a whole thing on that class. It was it was hilarious. But yeah, selling certificates. I was selling certificates. I had a guy one time who wouldn't. But go yeah, ahead. of course you're selling, sir. Of course you you have to get so many certificates. Like you go into sorry, I'm looking at you. Uh, you have like your counselor will tell you like one of the things that to help lower your points right. so you can get to a lower custody prison is you take classes. You get so many certificates and they'll start to recommend or, or lower your custody level or your, yeah, your custody level. So they tell you, take a class, take a class, take a class. So you start taking your cl- different classes. Guys would come in and they just want the certificates. Like, look, man, I, I just want to get to a low. I just want to get to a camp. You right. know, I just need to take two classes every quarter. I, I need four certificates in the next six months and they're going to lower my custody and go to a camp. <laughs> there's a, there's a camp near my house. I want to see my family. Can you? But I don't, I don't want to sit through your class. And I go, okay, great. Give right. me two coffees and two creamers. I'll do all your tests, and you'll get your certificate. Cool. Fair enough. So I had this one guy. They called him Big Dummy. <laughs> I hate to say this, because but listen, it's the bulk of the guys locked up are black guys. So Big Dummy was a big black guy. Dumb dummy. as a box of rocks. Big Dummy. <laughs> Everybody called <laughs> You could say, hey, big dummy. He, yeah, what's up? I mean, he didn't, it wasn't offended. It wasn't a short like BD or something? No, it was big dummy. <laughs> big Everybody dummy. called him big dummy. Um, so he came in, and he never came to the class again. <laughs> came in once, signed his name, and then after he about like— came to the last week? Never came to the class. And then what happened was he, you know, you had to be signing in. So right. one of his other buddies was signing him in, and then it, it was a whole Staying thing. here, doing your job. Yeah, and, and then so <coughs> he still missed. You could only miss three classes. He still missed like five classes. So he comes up to me just before the whole, the, the, you're supposed to give your certificates, take the last class, and he comes in, and I said, and, and he said, hey, Cox, uh, you know, I got a, a, an issue. Um, 
I've been going to class, but I understand that oh, yeah. I can't, that I missed a couple classes. But I was there. I was, I was like, bro, you're in my unit. Like, you're in my unit. I know you've been one time. <laughs> I was like, look, you want to, he's like, man, how do I get a certificate? I said, okay, I'll <laughs> sign in, sign you in. I said, I'll sign you in. And um, I said, I'll take the class for you. I mean, I'll take the test for you. I said, all you got to do is give me two coffees, two creamers. <laughs> That's it. He's like, all right, I got you. I got you. So the last day comes, I sign him in, everything. He's got a certificate. He didn't even show up to get the certificate. So I go to him and I said, hey, man, you never got me the, and, oh, he comes to me. Oh, I, he saw me. He was, hey, cut. Now I got a certificate. He goes, hey, man, I, I need my certificate. And I said, no, no, you never got me your coffee and creamer. No, I got you next week. I said, no, bro, I told you, you have to get it beforehand. Well, yeah, I already got a certificate. I already got a certificate. He doesn't realize that. He doesn't know how it works. He's got credit and everything for it. He doesn't know that, though. <clears throat> right. He's an idiot. And, and, and I, big and he, dummy. he's a big dummy. Big dummy got a big bag, by the way, every single time he comes in from commissary with a huge bag. Oh, yeah, he's a big dummy. He's just an idiot. He's just not going to buy it to me. Right. So, but by, by, he's not going to buy me my stuff. So, he comes in. I remember I said, hey, what's the, you know, well, you don't have it. Where's my stuff? You never got it. And he's like, yeah, man, I got you next week. And I said, no, what am I, stupid? I said, no, I need my stuff now. Right. Well, I don't have it now. I said, well, I told you I had to, you had to have it before the last class. Well, right. you know, my, my money, I ain't got my money right, bro. I ain't got, no, 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 bro. You, you, I, I see, <laughs> you're my unit. I see right. you with the bags. Every time you came in from commissary, I'm waiting for you to come give me my stuff. Well, his extra money is what he means. Right. <laughs> and I have your money. So I'm like, yeah, no, bro, we're, we're, you're, you're hit. What do you mean I'm hit? I said, you're hit. You're hit. You don't, there's no certificate. Right. And he said, um. No, nah, man. I said, listen, bro. I said, look, I got, I said, you know, what? I said, listen, man, man, just, just give me, I said, I, I said, go around to the store guy and get some coffee. And I think he came back and he said, man, I got a bag of Pringles or something, whatever it was. It was, it was worth like basically almost nothing. Three bucks, you uh, know, I thought it was worth like $8 that you're charging. Um, <clears throat> no, it wasn't worth the same amount of mo- okay. money, but I already have the certificate. So I end up saying to him, okay, I'll, I'll just give me the, I'll take the Pringles. That's fine. And so I go in to get the Pringles and I give him his certificate and he's got my Pringles in his hand. So I go, here's a certificate. And he goes and turns around and I go, you man, get out of here. And I go, What? I said, oh, are you fucking serious? And he goes, he, and he goes, yeah, man, what you going to do? What you going to do? I, I snatched the fucking, the, <laughs> snatch it out of his hands. No, no, I snatched the, Pringles. I snatched the Pringles out of his hands. And he went, oh, he goes, give me, give me the Pringles. And I, and I go like this, like I'm throwing. I said, go get it. Boom, like that. And he, and his, his eyes go, oh. And so I lean over, but I didn't throw it. I still have it in my hand. So his eyes followed where it should have gone. <laughs> He's, oh. And I snatched the, the certificate out, and then I, I dropped the Pringles on his bed and turn around and walk off. <laughs> he goes, you fucking con, man. You fucking. And he follows me in. So he follows me in my cell to grab. Like, he thinks he's going to grab the certificate. Right. And I go, he goes, man, I need that. I need that certificate, man. I need. I said, go get my shit. No, I said, I need that. I said, go get my stuff. I said, I ain't taking them. I want my two coffees and, and two creamers. Right. And he goes, nah, you give me that. That's that's my certificate. That's mine. I and I tore it up. Oh, you should have seen him. Oh. <laughs> and I said, this guy's huge, by the way. He's a massive guy, tall, big, and 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 he goes, he look and he. He said, man, I got I, team. He goes, I got team tomorrow. And I said, I said, bro, I said, you ain't got no certificate. I said, you're not in the computer. I said, I put you in the computer. I'm the one that puts you in. I don't, by the way. Right. So, and, and he was, oh, 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 you fucking con man. And he turned around and walked off, stormed off. So one of his buddies comes up to me like five minutes later and goes, hey, Cox, man, what's big dummy owe you? And I go, he owes me two coffees and two creamers. He goes, he said you tore up the certificate. Can you get him another certificate? And I went, yeah, I get him another certificate. What about putting him in the computer? I, and I said, 
You got the two coffees and creamers? He's like, I put them in a computer. I said, I'll put them in the I computer. put them in a the computer. <laughs> he goes off. He comes back, two coffees, two creamers. And I said, I'll put them in tomorrow. What was, it, what was his issue? I, I, he just didn't want to pay. I don't know. He's just stupid. And he thought. And he had money. And he thought he could just muscle his yeah, way. Yeah, a soft white guy. And he's not going to this. And he's he going to do it. And, he, you know, it's there's always some idiot trying you. They're always trying you for something. You know what I'm saying? It's yes. always get me that. So it's like. Get me the, like, and I'm reasonable. I'm not overcharging anybody. This is reasonable. Right. Like, so usually it's under what you really could. I knew guys are charging 30 bucks for a, for, I'm charging what? Less than $10 for, for, for a certificate. Guys are charging 30 bucks for it. And, and it lowers your points. You needed to lower your points. Right. And, but there's always some guy who's like, you know, they give you part of it and say, well, I got you after such and stop. Stop. <laughs> don't, don't do it. Don't. don't. Do it. Yeah. You don't, you don't understand how this works. I con you. You don't con me. <laughs> That's how this works. Not out of a certificate, right. at least. Yes. Go to the store guy. You know, oh, they ain't got no commissary. Go to the store guy. You know, you know it's like they're stupid. Like, they think you're dumb. Like, I've been, I've been here 10 years. Right. You think right. I don't know? <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. That was that was funny. Same thing, selling the certificates. <laughs> just same stupid. Dealing with different different types of people. Always some idiot. Well, I, I went from the pen back down to Jessup. Uh, the medium, which was Jessup, Georgia. And um, the Jessup was supposed to be, I don't know if you ever heard about them. They're supposed to be I mean, sweet. Yeah, Jessup. I mean, I, everybody wanted to go to Jessup. It, it went from sweet to sour. It was it it was basically uh, Coleman without all the theft. They only have about, it's, it's a light medium. It only has about like 600 people on the compound for the medium. And so it's it's kind of like the chow hall is ridiculously small, it, and and it was it was kind of sweet, but I, when I think about it, I had absolutely no problem with anybody there, at all. I mean, none. Right. There was no. Now I seen fights that I thought was hilarious. I mean, there the inmates and the officers did a lot of fighting, you know, which <laughs> which I thought <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. Because um, one the one fight I think I was there about a week, and there was a fight in the unit, which I thought was. And let me just tell you about it real quick, because it was funny. So um, these two guys are arguing about the television, right? I guess he's changing it, and and so one's an old guy, one's kind of a younger guy. So the old guy's like, "Stop changing the TV." You know, and he's like, no, nah, I'm going to change. I'm going to watch this. He goes, I just want to see this end of the show. No, nah, stop changing the TV. So the old guy swings at him and misses. And the young guy gives him like a two piece. Pop, pop, pop. And lights him up pretty good, like in the eye. So the old guy wigs out. You know, he gets composing himself. And he goes to his room. And he comes out with a knife. Mm-hmm. And he says, I'm going to stab you. Right? So the young guy, like, oh. So he's walking around the unit. So, like, the old guy's following him. following him. And he's going around. He's like, he goes, like, look. He goes, before I go to bed tonight, I'm going to stab you. So the young guy is, so they're walking around the unit. So the whole unit is watching as this slow pursuit. It's not really a slow pursuit, but it's, it's probably a speed walking pursuit about five times around the unit. Right? So, I guess the young guy gets tired. He tries to stop and put the chair in the way. And everybody's like, no, 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 go, 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 go. So the whole time, you have to know this officer. It's a ball-headed kind of a, like, real kind of cop type of officer. He was a weird dude, the, the CO. He's in the office with the lights off because he's asleep. Yeah. The, the office door is open, right? So the young guy, after three laps, around, five laps around the unit, he goes to the officer's he goes into the office where the officer is, right? And he tries to close the door. So as the young guy, as the old guy is chasing him, that's where I thought was hilarious because as he's trying to close the office door, that was the fastest I saw the old guy move. That's when he, you know, he's going from a steady to <laughs> and he gets in the office and they're fighting inside the officer's office. So the officer's up and he's spraying him and he's going, stop! <laughs> Stop! <laughs> he sprays them. He lights up the whole dorm, but the old guy ends up stabbing him. But they took them both, both out. He still got him. He still stabbed. But the, listen, the young guy beat him. Both his eyes they were shut. 
But the, the old guy still stabbed him. <laughs> let, let, in, in that institution, inmates fighting CO, probably about 13 incidents. It's unbelievable. Like, there, we didn't fight each other too much. It was the inmates fighting the COs. I, I have, I got to tell you, only because you mentioned the, the officer. So there's this old, uh, an old man off. There was an old guy that was actually my celly at one point. His name was Frank Smith. I used to tell him this, you know, that sounds like a made up name. Um, so Frank Smith was old. He was probably 66, 67 years old. He was a sex offender. Um, that, uh, so he, um, there was an older officer too, who's probably in his late 60s, 64, 65. And it turns out that officer had moved from prison to prison to prison because of complaints from inmates that he was harassing them, like sexually harassing them. So the officer, um, one day Frank's walking by. Frank was in decent shape. He was in good shape. Had a white haircut or white flat top. You know, and he was walking by and the officer goes, uh, hey, hey, mate, come here. What's your name? And he goes, um, Smith. Smith. And he goes, how long have you been here? He goes, this guy just got in there maybe a few months. He'd been, the officer had been here maybe three to six months. And he goes, he goes, uh, been here about, about four years, four years. He goes, maybe five years. And he goes, huh, you work out? And he goes, yeah, I work out. I work out. You know, I have a bad back. Sometimes I don't work out. But yeah, he said, yeah, you look like you're in pretty good shape. You work, you stay much. You work out when you're younger too? He's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. I did. And he's, well, what do you do? He starts talking about it. And I go in the rec yard. I walk. And I also do, I do dips. And I do Whoa. this. Starts talking to him. And he's like, and, and Frank said, I mean, I don't talk to the officer. Like, like he doesn't talk to the officer. But the guy called him in. What am I going to do? And it's so low. You know, and he's like, huh. Yeah, so um, how much time you got? Oh, I got this much time. And it's like about 10 more years. And he's like, you know, oh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he, he goes, and he's looking me up and down, like checking me out. And he says, you know, Frank, he said, uh, you're locked up. If a man has sex with another man, he said, you've been locked up. That doesn't make him gay. And he goes, and Frank goes, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> and, he goes, <laughs> and, and so, by the way, so when I hear this whole story being dragged out, being told, Pete, my buddy Pete, and I are sitting at a, in an area called Stonehenge. Where we called it Stonehenge. They had these round things with all, these, all these, um, these benches. And in the middle, they had these concrete tables like this. But you had four, and they're, they're bolted. Everything's concrete. And so we're sitting there talking. And Frank comes walking by. Frank comes walking over and finds me. This is in the middle of the night. This is like six or seven o'clock at night. Comes walking over. He goes, "Hey," he said, "You're not gonna believe what just happened." And I go, "What?" And so he tells us that whole story. And as we're talking, he goes, "Can you believe that?" I go, "What else happened?" He goes, "Well, I mean, he started. He told me that." I said, "Yeah, it does." And he goes, "No, it doesn't. Doesn't." He said, "I mean, you've been locked up a long time. I mean, you know, I'm just saying things happen. You shouldn't. You shouldn't feel bad about that." He goes, "I don't feel bad about anything." He goes, look, I feel weird about this whole conversation at this point. And now keep in mind, Frank was meticulously, like he was well-groomed. Frank's clothes were all, Frank had a lot of money. Right. Frank in his, in his commissary account had over a hundred and something thousand dollars. Wow. By the I mean, way. You were allowed to have that much. Oh, then. no. He, he's, it, it got really high. I mean, keep in mind, Frank had a lot of money. Um, Frank sent me money. When I got out, That's right. Frank sent me money. You told me that. You okay? Two grand, you, 2000 you, No, no, not him. No, he didn't send me that. He sent me like six or 800 bucks, something like oh. that. Uh, no, inmates in general sent me a couple thousand. Just inmates in general. Where it's like they would walk across the compound when they'd see my buddy P. They go, how's Matt doing? And people were like, oh, he's good. He's doing this. He's doing that. And so when I was setting up my website, Pete said, when I, Pete would call and he said, well, what are you doing? I said, ah, you know, he said, well, is the website going up? I said, I, I can't. Peter, I don't. I can't. I was still in the halfway house. I'm in the halfway house. I can't do a website. He's like, why? I said, because I don't have a computer. Right. I don't have a. You know, I started explaining all the problems. He goes, what do you need? And I went, 
well, I don't know. I need a computer. I need a, a, a an, an iPhone. I need uh, to buy Final Cut Pro. I need, you know, these are things I, things I need. I need Photoshop. I mean, right. these, and he's like, what does it cost? I said, it's like a couple grand for me to even get to the point where I can put together a website. And he goes, um, it's just because I don't, if, you know, people are like, oh, you could put it up. Not if you don't have the computer. Right. People don't understand that. They're like, you should do this. You should do, how? They don't understand. I'm in the halfway house. Like I've got an $80 phone that has a virus constantly. I can barely use it to call. I can't download apps. It constantly has viruses. <laughs> so, you know, I'm like, I need an iPhone. I need this. I need that. So I start going through the whole thing. I'm all the things that I need. And Pete goes, okay, I'm going to get you the money. And I was like, how's that? And he goes, I've been walking across the compound. And everybody stops me and asks me, how are you doing? How are you doing? This happens four or five times a day. He goes, from now on, when they stop me, I'm going to say, you know what he needs? He needs a computer. He goes, he needs an Apple. He can buy a used one. It costs this much money. He needs one. Right. Did I tell you, I ended up getting two Apples. Phones or computers? No, two computers. Oh. Frank gave me six or six or seven hundred dollars for I think six to six or eight hundred. I'm not sure exactly what. <laughs> Frank gave me that for an iPhone. My first iPhone. Like, I mean, these guys literally, literally are a buddy of mine's mother mailed me his old one. Well, what was it they were planning on you doing? Well, just well, they, they, they just, the want, they just the... wanted me to set up my website. I have a website called Inside True Crime. Right. They just, look, you know me, we're friends. There's 15 or 20 or 30 guys, but everybody in general knew who I was. They're all reading my stories. My stories are being passed from inmate to inmate to inmate. And all of them are like, what are you going to do when you get out? I'm going to try and get these things turned into right. documentaries, into films. Series. I'm going to spend the next five or 10 years pushing to get these stories made right that's what i'm gonna do and so what happens is by that point i'd come out in the atlantic magazine i like guys they believe in me they right. want to see it happen all right so that's what the right you know how many inmates get out and they don't do anything yes i'm gonna that's do this and this and this and yes. this next thing you know they're working at fedex they've got a chick with two kids and that's it they're, 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 that's it what about the end of your story about the officer? To come so up he comes that? to, so the, uh, Frank's telling us a story. Right. And he's like, yeah, he this, he that, he this. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, so what'd you do? He's like, what do you mean what I do? I, I, I left and I went, oh, Donovan Davis was there too. Donovan goes, I mean, Frank, that's, it's an opportunity. And he goes, what? What do you mean? And Frank's, he's an old crotchety <laughs> fucker too. He's like, what? What does that mean? And I went, I said, I mean, Frank, you're not allowed to have, I said, the, the guy's, the guy's, he's gay. The guy's a, a homosexual. I said, you know, they've transferred him from another prison. And somebody else, was, Donovan was like, I heard he had been transferred a few times. He's a problem. Like, he's like, he's like, like the priests. They move him around. You've had 15 parishes in 10 years. Yes. You're a problem. You're a problem. You're, you're, so that's what they're doing with this, with this CO. And I go, he's probably, I go, he's hitting on you. He goes, I know he was hitting on me. I said, right. So, and he goes, so what? I said, so you got 10 years left, bro. What does that mean? I go, it means you might have to take one for the fucking team. I mean, you know, he's like, and I said, I mean, look, and, and Donovan goes, Donovan says, Get he goes, a cell phone. Donovan <laughs> says, listen, at least give him a fucking reach around, you know, <laughs> he goes, give him reach around. He said, you know, I mean, what's the big deal? He's, he goes, are you out of your sight? He goes, what's the big deal? And Pete says, save the sample. And I go, I said, bro, I said, he's not on, on your, on your shirt. <laughs> I said, I go, the wind ski him. I said, bro, I said, you got 10 years. That's a sex. I said, that's, that's rape. And he's like, you sick fuckers. And I, we're like, <laughs> right, bro, we're laughing. I go, I'm telling you, I said, save the sample. I said, I said, and Donovan's like, don't swallow. He said, fuck you, Donovan. And <laughs> we're laughing. Pete's like, save the sample. Sit it on your, sit it on your dress, on your shirt. Spit I'm like, look, you, you. Come in, you leave, you go to, I said, you f listen, what? I said, I'll write a letter to the fucking times. We'll get an article made. I'll get you the publicity. We'll get you out, Frank. Fuck you. I'll do the time. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking asshole. Motherfucker walks out. Listen, that officer talked to him a lot. Well, he, he was constantly. He, he, got, he got comfortable with him. He was constantly. Yeah. Well, the first time he talked to him, when he suggested it, because nothing happened to the officer, he got emboldened. So now he's really talking to Frank. Can you fuck? Can you imagine? I mean, we were and if Frank would the guy would stop him and say a few, and Frank would say, "Yeah, what's up?" And then walk off, and I'd look at Frank and I'd go, and Frank would be like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> <laughs> I ain't trying to get nothing. <laughs> so funny. All right, can oh. we close this one? Yeah, yeah. Because my I'm phone's ready. going nuts. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> how, yeah. How long All have right. you been? Wrap it. We'll wrap it up. You, yeah. I'm. You want to wrap it? up? You want to wrap it up? 
Yes. All right. You got you to tell them. Tell them to hit, oh, I don't tell know how to do wrap it up. Yeah, oh. tell, them to wrap, tell them to subscribe. Say, hit subscribe. All right. Hit the bell. Hit the bell. Share. Share. Uh, like the video. Like the video. And leave a comment for the algorithm. And leave a comment for the algorithm. All right. Thank you. This has been Matt Cox's True Crime. Right. All right. And I'm Zach. And I appreciate you. Uh, <laughs> and, and I'm Zach. And I appreciate you guys watching in. Thank you. All right. See ya. See ya. <laughs>